Good evening, everyone. Welcome. We have a full house. This is great. Good evening. We're going to begin the evening session. Tony, do you want to call roll? Yes. Torres? Cohen? Here. Ortiz? Present. Davis? Cohen? Here. Candelas? Here. Foley? Here. Batra? Present. Kame? Here. Mayhan? Here. Thank you. Okay, we have one ceremonial item this evening. Uh, Councilor Candelas, if you'll join me down at the podium, we'll be recognizing the Evergreen High School girls basketball team and celebrating their CCS win. Yeah. All right. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, tonight, uh, we will be honoring uh, these determined and resilient young women of the 22-23 Evergreen Valley High School basketball team. Go Cougars. Uh, Yes, I am a proud alum, so I'm a little biased, but the team started this season with an unknown feeling. The team was transitioning to a new coach, their third head coach in three seasons. So that was the first hurdle they had to overcome. But head coach Drew Furstenmaker came in with a great team approach, earning the trust of the girls. Evergreen hit the ground running with a 7-0 start, the best start in school history. During that span, the girls won the Lindbrook Tournament, and we're also led by standout team captains Rika Apermayan and Leela Roden, who were also named MVP and all tourney in that uh, tournament as well. The girls hit adversity, adversity during the middle of the season due to injuries and illnesses, which led to their first back-to-back -back losses in the season. However, during that run, they developed character because at times they played with only five to seven players. During league play, Evergreen Valley finished with a 7-3 record. Uh, Rike Oppermayan won her second Most Valuable Player Award, averaging 30-plus points per game. Layla Roden was also named Junior of the Year, leading the team in multiple statistical categories. Uh, Zwan Mai Nguyen was selected First Team All-League, and David, da David Woodham, uh, Davin Woodham, sorry, was selected second team all league. The team finished the regular season with an overall record of 17 and seven, earning second seed in the Central Coast Section Division I tournament. Evergreen was considered by most a team small in size, but mighty with speed, skill, and spirit. They were well prepared for their championship run. The team was on a mission to achieve something that had never been done before in school history, and on February 25th, the girls won the CCS Division I championship, championship, accomplishing the unthinkable to outsiders, but not to them, because they stuck together and fought. Their determination, dedication, and resilience showed throughout the tournament. Rika Oppermayan led the Central Coast section in scoring. In fact, she is one of the top scorers in the country. Yeah, give her a round of applause, yeah! <laughs> She's, she's shy. Uh, uh, Layla Rowden is also a San Jose Mercury News honorable mention. Yeah, give her a round of applause. Uh, because of this championship, people will always remember Evergreen Valley. They accomplished all of this while being brilliant in the classroom as well. They had a 3.6 cumulative GPA as a team. Wow. <laughs> They are a great example of determination and dedication that we see in our community. And with that, I would like to congratulate them, uh, their parents on their continued success as well. And they either have Coach Drew or our MVP say a few words. Okay, um, thank you again for this opportunity. Um, on behalf of uh, our team, we would just like to say thank you. And like we started this season coming back from a new coach as um, 
or Councilman said. And um, just from that, it just shows how tight of a team we are because we just overcame like everything that was in our way. And along with that, um, whenever we lost, we actually took stuff away from that, coming together the next practice, just playing as a team and just growing more and more as the season grew. Um, first time in like school history as like a group sport to ever win CCS really meant a lot to us. And it was our second appearance in state as well. And just, we are a really like small team as you can see, but that just shows that even with a few amount of people, like you can make a very big difference. And we're also a very young team, so we still have a long way to go. And I'm just really proud and I'm really happy to be here today with my team. So on behalf of us, thank you again. Congrats again, Cougars. Councilmember Candela has just let me know there were no seniors on the team, so we're expecting a repeat next year. All right. Go Cougars. Okay. Thank you, Councilmember. Great commendation. We are on to item 10.1A, Burbank number 47, annexation. Do we have a staff presentation? It's on consent, so no presentation. Oh, that's consent. Okay, I'm sorry. Do we have two on consent? We do. That's also 10-1-B. Great. Do, do we have a motion? Move approval of consent. Second. Second. Thank you. Public comment? Mike? Yeah, this is Mike Sodergren, PAC San Jose. Um, we recommend approval of staff's memo um, with the added recommendation that city begin the process of designating the National Register el eligible Burbank Theater as a city landmark. The property is currently listed on the county's heritage resource inventory and has been determined eligible for candidate city landmark status by the San Jose Historical Landmarks Commission with strong neighborhood support for its preservation and reactivation. The parcels proposed for annexation were purchased via auction last year for $1.6 million and are now being listed for resale at $3 million. As this building is a key element of the West, this is the Burbank Theater, a key element to the West San Carlos Urban Village is paramount that the development community and city officials acknowledge the building's historic significance and potential for reuse. PAC also asked that the city encourage property owners with historic resources to activate and professionally uh, professionally secure the site um, pending uh, new development ideas. Thank you. Valerie. Hello. Hello. Yes, this is Valerie Armento. I am district counsel for the Burbank Sanitary District. Uh, we are concerned because since there is no specific development plan for these parcels, um, that there has been no discussion of the technical issues related to uh, detachment from the district. The project manager uh, said that uh, someone from the city public works department would contact uh, that individual to discuss the technical issues. That contact didn't occur. Um, the Burbank Sanitary District is very concerned that it is not treated appropriately as a governmental entity when trying to interact with the city on these annexation issues. And so we would request that it not be detached, which was the original position of the staff, and then suddenly it was changed. Um, so our concern again is that there's no clear understanding as to how the technical issues of the flow of sewage would be um, handled. 
uh, and that it is inappropriate to detach it from the district at this time. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Alex? Hey, good evening, Council. This is Alex Shore. I just wanted to share the Burbank Theater is unfortunately a place that we don't have too much of in San Jose, which is a historic place that celebrates our, our history and our past. And when we have these icons in a place that often paves over its history, it's really important that we celebrate and support them. And so we're super supportive of this annexation and hopefully it will result in the redevelopment of the Burbank Theater in a site that will allow this place to flourish into the future. We're supportive of the District 6 Neighborhood Leaders Group memo on this, um, that there is a future for this site as the Preservation Action Council has stated and wanna be involved in any way we can to help with the community engagement process, if there is one, uh, to envision a future for this site, because too often in San Jose, we lose hope and say that this will all get paved over or this needs to go away. And I think there is a real possibility for this site to be a vibrant new place again, that balances the future and economic development with the celebration of the past. So hopefully, We'll move forward with annexation, but also the city will continue to play an active role led by District 6 uh, to envision a better future for this site that celebrates the past. Thanks so much. Back to council. Thank you. Okay, we have a motion. I don't see any hands up. Let's vote. Torres? Cohen? Aye. Ortiz? Aye. Davis? Doan? Aye. Candelas? Aye. Foley? Aye. Batra? Aye. Kamei? Aye. Mahan? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're gonna jump down to 10.4, which we had noticed at 6 p.m., and I apologize, we're now at 6.23. So we're going to go to item 10.4, which is the conventional rezoning and special use permit on property located at 2740 Ruby Avenue. And we do have a Short staff presentation, is that right? Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. Uh, Robert Manford, Deputy Director for Planning. With me this evening, uh, Jay Guevara, Deputy Director for Public Works, David Keon, Principal Planner for the CEQA team, and Dana Peak, who is the city's Historic Preservation Officer. So item number 10.4, before you uh, is the Wat Kama Kampuchea Chrome Temple project. And the project components entail a conventional rezoning from R15 zoning district to PQP, public quasi public zoning district, to allow spy high building setbacks and separation of buildings. It also entails a special use permit to allow removal of 21 trees. 20 ordinance size, one non ordinance size. Could you please size. speak a little closer to the mic? Yes. So it's a special use permit to allow removal of 21 trees, 20 ordinance size, one non ordinance size, 75 replacement trees, and construction of an approximately 13,902 square foot private gathering facility, which includes alternative parking arrangements specifically valet parking. The general plan land use designation for the site is residential neighborhood and the existing zoning district is R-15. The project has been reviewed for conformance with the city's general plan, municipal code, commercial design guidelines, city council policy 6-30, with regards to public outreach and the California Environmental Quality Act, CEQA. It complies with all areas that have been uh, addressed. From a CEQA standpoint, an environmental impact report 
was circulated for 45 days from August 23rd, 2022 to October 7, 2022. The EIR identified relevant mitigation measures for impacts associated with air quality, nesting birds and biological resources, hazards and hazardous materials from past use of the site and construction related noise and vibration. The mitigation measures are all included in the mitigation monitoring and reporting program, which is attached to the EIR and the staff report. Approximately 30 public comments were received on the draft EIR. The comments included concerns related to noise during construction and operation, traffic and parking, and neighborhood compatibility. The first amendment to the EIR, which includes the responses to comments, were, have been posted to the city's website on February 9th, 2023. Based on comments received, no recirculation of the EIR is necessary. Staff recommends that the City Council adopt a resolution certifying the Wat Kema Kampuchea Com Temple Project EIR and adopting a related mitigation monitoring and reporting plan in accordance with CEQA. Also to adopt an ordinance rezoning the approximately 1.86 gross acre site located on the northeast corner of Ruby Avenue and Norwood Avenue from the R15 single family residential zoning district to PQP, which is the public quasi-public zoning district. Also to adopt a resolution approving subject to conditions the special use permits to allow the removal of 21 trees, 20 ordinance size, one non-ordinance size with 75 replacement trees for the construction of an approximately 13,902 square foot private gathering facility, which is the Wat Kama Buddhist Temple with an alternative parking arrangement on an approximately 1.86 gross acre site. And with that, that concludes the staff presentation and we are available for any questions. The applicant is also present. Thank you. Great, I believe we're hearing from the applicant now. We have five minutes for the applicant to share. Hi, Lena. Well, I think we're just loading slides. Okay. Go ahead. Thank you, thank you, Mayor Mahan and council members for the opportunity to present to you our temple project. The proposed temple project represents a long time dream for the local community, Cambodian community, which lives within five miles of the proposed temple. Because, temple, because Cambodians hold temple Buddhism as, uh, not just as a religion, but as the central pillar of everyday life, the community established temples as places of worship and mutual support. Unfortunately, because of the uh, poverty of the refugees arriving here, these temples often amounted to nothing more than single-family homes in poor neighborhoods that lack facilities and any sense of community pride. I believe the lack of traditional temple resources greatly delayed the community's recovery from the trauma of war and genocide. To this day, the American Cambodian community still struggles with some of the lowest rankings in health, education, and income. Our community's um, inadequate temples means they also lack professional uh, governance. That's certainly the case with the community's temple at Sunset Court. And it's important to note, to note that the foundation does not operate, um, operate temple at Sunset Court. Good evening, Mayor Mahan, members of the council. My name is Eric Shainauer. I represent the Khmer Buddhist Foundation. That was Lena Lam, the founder of the foundation, and I am a consultant to them. First of all, we'd like to thank city staff for literally years of working on this project. It's been over four years in the, in the hopper, and we've had significant community engagement over that time, from early community meetings led by our project team to official city community meetings, uh, as well as lots of individual and group neighbor meetings and meetings with community organizations like the District 8 Roundtable. And in a spirit of transparency with the community, we set up a Dropbox distribution to any interested community members and anything we gave to the city for review, we put in the Dropbox and shared with um, all of the additional, all of the neighbors in real time. 
based on the input that we got from the, the, the neighbors, we made changes to the project. So first of all, we had underground parking planned. They didn't like it. We removed the underground parking. We reduced the overall square footage of the project significantly. We added a sound barrier wall along the property line with the residential neighbors. And the square footage, as I indicated, dropped significantly from 17.5 for buildings at the surface and the 42,000 square foot underground garage down to 13,900 feet. So a significant reduction in square footage. Uh, we agreed to have the city conduct a full EIR, even though it was not required by CEQA, so that all impacts could be fully evaluated. Uh, the project includes neighborhood pedestrian safety improvements, such as sidewalks that don't exist today, and we will um, help construct the traffic circle that the city's Department of Transportation wants in the Evergreen area. We also agreed to a construction uh, mitigation plan uh, that we will implement with that includes voluntary provisions to ensure that the construction is as palatable as possible with the neighbors. Um, so if one fundamental question is do places of worship belong in neighborhoods? And I think we all know the answer to that is yes, uh, but city policy says so. The zoning code for residential neighborhoods say that churches are allowed, as places of assembly are allowed, in all residential districts with a use permit. So that's what you're considering today, a use permit. The general plan is very clear. In the residential neighborhood general plan designation, it clearly states that private community gathering facilities, which places of worship are, are supported in residential neighborhood areas. An example of that point, we collected uh, photos of of places of worship in each of your districts, one in each on this diagram, but you know your districts well. There are dozens, if not hundreds, of places of worships that are intimately located in residential neighborhoods adjacent to, to homes. That is normal. But to be a good neighbor, our site is, has minimal buildings in terms of FAR, 0.17 FAR. We have lush gardens around and we have adequate parking to meet the needs of the facility. So lastly, this temple is critically important. Most of the members live within five miles of the site. We've done four years of extensive outreach. This foundation will establish professional governance so the property is managed well. It meets all city requirements. The staff and the planning commission recommend approval. So we hope that you will do the, the same and find that this place of worship will be a great um, asset to the city of San Jose. Thank you. We're Great. available for questions uh, at any point. Thank you. Great, thank you. We will go to public comment first. Given the high volume of comments that we are seeing both online and in person, we're going to limit public comment to one minute per person and Tony will manage the speaking order. Okay, I'm gonna call a few speakers at a time. When you hear your name, please come down and line up. You do not have to come in any particular order. I have Debbie, followed by T. Lee, Susie Wynn, Loke Lee, and Matthew Ihima. When you get to the microphone, if you could tell me your first name. Hi, my name's T. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. We appreciate your time here to listen. I live directly across from the proposed parcel. I live directly across from the proposed parcel. So I do have some concerns. Policy VN-111 states that protect residential neighborhoods from the encroachment of incompatible activities or land use which may have a negative impact on the residential living environment. The proposed four-story, 65-foot high, 14,000 square foot is intended with the use permit for large crowds, commercial use plan, late nights, and long operating hours. That's going to impact the current living environment, the existing quality of the life of the surrounding area and the neighbors, right? This is a private gathering facility that they're asking for. Right, for events, banquets, amplified sound. It is non, 
consistent with the residential neighborhood characteristics. Not typical of the resident. Thank you, appreciate your time. Next speaker. Hello, my name is Debbie. And I just wanted to report that the intersection of Ruby and Norwood is actually quite a problematic one in terms of traffic. We do have a high school nearby, as you know, and um, we do have some young and experienced drivers that sometimes don't stop. And so accidents occur and not all are reported. Fortunately, we do have a resident who's recorded a lot of the accidents in the area. We can make that, um, those videos available upon request. The intersection is typically very congested because there's three schools in the area. During pickup and drop off times, you'll have a big lineup. And many pedestrians walk at all hours of the day, you know, from day to evening, you know, and then there are plans for a roundabout to try to relieve this problematic four-way stop that we have, but it's not, really un it's not really clear about how this roundabout is going to, if it'll be better or worse, because at Coleman Costco, they do have a small roundabout which replaced a four-way stop. And it's been pr problematic for drivers. And if you can find co public comments on Thank it, you, you will find negative things. Next speaker. Good evening, council members. My name is Matthew Ejima. I am a resident. I live uh, a block from the major intersection where the temples plan. Uh, the Pass arounds uh, I'm on slide uh, 13, 14, and 15 for those that can follow along. Uh, policy land use 11.4 specifically states that it discourages new commercial use on small existing residential streets unless it can be clearly demonstrated that the commercial use can integrate with the existing residential neighborhood without creating adverse impacts. It also discourages primary access to large commercial par parking lots and structures to residential neighborhoods. Um, Policy land use 11.6 mentions that for new infill developments, the form of new such development should be compatible with and to the degree feasible and consistent with the form of the surrounding neighborhood pattern. There are no evidences or responses from the staff or the applicant showing how the project meets the requirements of this policy. Uh, therefore, the, require, the project should be denied appropriately if it doesn't meet those. And uh, there are no adjacent homes in the entire neighborhood that feature all the fancy. Thank you, next speaker. I'm also going to call, um, I think it says Darlene M., Dan Rogi, Danny Hong, and Moni Knopp. Go ahead. Good evening. My name is Susie Wynn. Um, the entire neighborhood within 2,000 foot radius of the site are, uh, are all appropriately designated residential neighborhood per Journal Plan 2040. Typical homes are 2,000 square foot average. A private gathering facility that can hold thousands of people and a commercial use operation plan is just not compatible, not consistent with the fabric of the area of the general plan. There are no homes of the same architectural design, size, height, similar to the proposed project. The small home right in the middle of the site is 906, I'm sorry, 996 square foot living space. It is 12 foot tall. Other adjacent homes are 1,000 to 2,400 square foot, 30 foot, 34 foot tall. The policy clearly say that the project needs to reflect the character of the predominant existing de development of the same type in the surrounding area through the regulation of lot size, height, building scale. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Hi, my name is uh, Murli Pabiseti. I'm uh, one of the neighbors uh, uh, representing this uh, grassroots movement, uh, which is hundreds of neighbors who have opposed this temple, right? Uh, again, this is not about temple. This is about land use, right? Uh, we welcome all, all religions, and these uh, 1,400 people who have signed this petition comes from all religions, all nationalities, all age groups, everything. So it's a diverse community which is trying to, uh, trying to which is opposing this project to preserve the safety of the neighborhood. We are, uh, okay, uh, and again, secondly, uh, uh, we have read the memo from the council members and the, and the mayor. Uh, the concerns are not, have, been, have not been completely addressed, and uh, we still find this project to be inconsistent uh, with the uh, with the character of the neighborhood. Thank you. Okay. And can Thank you, you, sir? Can you step over here for a second? We didn't get your name. Next speaker. Hi, 
Hi, Mayor, Council. Appreciate your time here. Um, I'm Dan Rogie. I live about a half mile from the project, and um, you know we're just trying to get together to really understand w what's going to happen with this large plot of land, and you know the neighbors that are living right across the street from there. You know they're going to have a four-story building that's going to be you know casting a shadow upon them. It's just not compatible with with the area. And I know, Mr. Mayor, you ran on a platform of common sense, and it's just not common sense to have a large commercial facility in a neighborhood like this. You saw the pictures. The pictures show, you know, it's all homes, and, and you know, we, all of us moved up into that area because it's a beautiful area, and, you know, we do not really want to have big commercial buildings that will be having events on a regular basis. So thank you. Thank you, next speaker. Greetings, everyone, Councilor and Mayor. My name is Danny Hong. I support the construction of the new Khmer Temple. I am a Khmer Rao Bomb student living in San Jose. As I am saying this, millions of Khmer heroes and leaders are behind me. I believe the construction of this new temple would lead to new opportunities to find cultural identity and experience. I believe this is a perfect spot to build this temple as it is surrounded by those of Asian descent. Building this temple will help revive Khmer culture and will bring those who didn't know they were Khmer here. This constru construction would make my heroes and leaders proud of their sacrifice they made for us. This will also raise those who have fallen to the fear of communism in Vietnam and Cambodia. The Khmer legacy will never be tarnished and if needed, we will rise again and again. Thank you, Councilor Mayor. Thank you, next speaker. I am Kirish Shah, president of Silicon Valley Interreligious Council, which was established in San Jose by various places of worship and faith organizations from Western and Eastern, Eastern faiths. I'm also a Jain leader of the Jain Temple in Bay Area. On behalf of our board members and faith organizations, I urge you to approve this proposal uh, as it, will, it, it, it helps a small Cambodian community to establish his roots in the area by having a temple, because every community member requires a temple for them to mushroom, for them to establish their roots in, in the community. I want to thank the mayor as well as all the members in the council for considering this proposal, and we welcome additional temples in the Bay Area to make diversity even more diverse in our San Jose area. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Um, before you speak, I, Mr. Knopp, I'd um, also like to call Catherine Dayton, Peter Hong, Sophie Lamb, and Adrian Lamb. Go ahead. Good evening, Mayor, Council members, and staff. My name is Moni Knopp, a proud Khmer American. I'm writing in support of the proposed temple, and I'm hoping you will too. As a refugee from Cambodia, this new temple will serve my family friends, this community, and I in many ways. This temple will serve as a place to seek peace and solitude, an institution of worship, a place to learn and preserve our Khmer heritage and culture, a place to connect and belong, but most importantly, a place for our Khmer community to heal. As refugees of a genocide who has experienced so many adversities and disadvantages since we arrived in the U.S., there is no greater place for a community to gather, to worship, and to heal than having our own temple to do so. Buddhism is the core of who we are, as 95% of us practice Buddhism. To us, this temple will be our home, away from home, in America. I ask that all of you vote in support of the proposed temple. Thank you for your time and kind consideration. Next speaker. Greetings. Um, my name is Peter. I live in San Jose and a current student at uh, San Jose State. I strongly support this project. I believe that creating this new space will prosper and bring out the most for our traditions. I personally think that it will expand our culture and uh, our worships along with the hopes uh, to reach out to more people to acknowledge our Khmer identity. With this new location, potentially it will attract new incomers, uh, creating diversity since there are many people who attend the uh, the current temple daily. 
uh, needed more the space to carry the tr Khmer traditions efficiently along with the uh, many monks. With this, preserving our Khmer culture uh, as it is little right now, uh, desiring to co uh, grow further. In closure, I strongly support this new construction. I uh, thank you for your time and consideration, and uh, thank you. Good evening, Council Mayor. My name is Adrian Makaraleam, and I'm 18 years old. I stand before you today and support the proposed temple. As a member of the Khmer Krom community, I've witnessed firsthand the positive impact that temples can have on individuals and the community as a whole. Growing up, I didn't pay much attention to the temple and rarely attended. However, as I got older, I decided to give it a chance, and I have not regretted it since. Through the temple, I've learned so much about my culture, including the language, alphabet, and beautiful traditional dances. I've also had the opportunity to develop closer bonds with my Khmer own people, especially the youth, especially the youth, as there are not many Cambodians in my school. The proposed Khmer Temple will provide a place for our community to come together, celebrate our culture, and pass down our traditions to future generations. It will be a source of pride for our community and help preserve the beautiful Khmer own culture that is currently a minority and fading away as we speak. I urge you all to consider the positive impact that this Khmer Temple could have on our community. Good things come out of temples, and this one will be no exception. Thank you, Mayor and Council, for your time and consideration. Thank you. Next speaker. I'd also like to call down Sean Bryson, Kiana, and Sokunthia Mao. Go ahead. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Sophie Lam. I am 22 years old, and I was born in Vietnam and came to San Jose when I was seven. The temple has been a lifeline for me and others in our community. Coming here at a young age, I felt isolated and forced to fit in. Having this temple helped me stay connected to my roots and find my identity. Growing up, I felt everything slipping away. I spoke less Khmer and found myself being very distant from my identity. However, going to the temple gave me a sense of belonging and purpose. It allowed me to learn about my culture, language, and history that are not taught in school. Every week, a group of youth and I come to the temple to learn our language along with, along with practicing um, traditional dancing. We are the future and keeping this tradition alive is significant for our community. The temple is the key f to helping us to preserve our culture. So today, I urge you to support the approval of this temple. This is not just a building, it is a community, a family, and a tradition. Thank you, Mayor and Council, for your time and consideration. Thank you. Next speaker. Uh, good evening. My name is Catherine, and I'm speaking in support of the construction of the temple. I'm fourth generation Khmer Krom, and I've lived in San Jose all my life. I go to Evergreen Valley Community College as well. Um, the construction of the Khmer Krom Temple is important to me because the temple will offer a place for our community to gather in one spot and will allow us to better practice, practice our religion in a larger space compared to the temple we have now. I believe it is extremely important for my community to have a proper place of worship and I can't thank my mom enough for introducing me to our culture at a young age and for having the courage alongside other Khmer Krom people to immigrate to the US, which is a land of opportunity and growth. I really like watching and participating in traditional holidays and events because they let me continue to get closer to our culture. Another reason this temple is important to me is because when I was younger, I felt as though I had no place I really belonged. The temple that my mom took me to served as a reminder that there will always be, always be a place for me, even if it feels like there isn't. I want this feeling to continue on to new generations so they know they have a place they can belong to. Next speaker. Um, good evening, my name is Sokin Tia Mao. I'm 16 years old and I've resided in San Jose my whole life. I support the proposed temple and I urge for your support too. The Khmer Krom people have struggled continuously with tragic events and trauma that have gone unnoticed. As the world progresses and time changes, it is crucial that we change the narrative of mental health and provide a safe space and proper resources for our people. This proposed temple will do its part in not only aiding our people, but serve as a place for our community to grow and thrive. With our community, a major part of our culture is our arts. I've been a traditional dan Khmer dancer since I was eight years old, and I fear that later on, the Khmer Grown culture will become more obsolete. I really do believe that this temple can help preserve our beautiful culture, and so that the next generation, my generation, will not forget where we came from and how grateful we are to be Khmer Grown. Akun, thank you, and for, thank you to the commission, and thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you, next speaker. Good evening, Mayor and Council members. I am Sophaline Mao, a 1.5 generation Cambodian American. Today, I urge you to support the proposed temple as a place for all who seek solace, peace, and comfort. You too can learn meditation, 
take Dharma lessons on loving kindness, compassion, and practice giving back. A Buddhist temple is where we practice mindfulness, seek healing, and find a sense of community. It is not a place for weddings, loud parties, gambling, or heavy drinking, as anyone else may have claimed. The Khmer Karom community currently faces cultural and religious suppression today in Vietnam, so I hope that San Jose is more tolerant. It is a place that preserves language, culture, and religion for, for future generations. Consider today how you can plant a tree to provide shade for which you will never sit under. Our country's forefathers built America on the core values of religious freedom, opportunity, and liberty for all. The temple will be your legacy for the future generation. So please vote yes for the temple. Thank you. Thank you, next speaker. Dear Honorable, Honorable Mayor and members of the City Council, my name is Kiana. I am from San Jose. I strongly support the proposed temple because we are from the same background of the Theravada Buddhism, a school of moral training and meditation. For the benefits of many, we have to preserve customs, cultures, language of our ancestors and propagate teachings of our Lord Buddha to Buddhists, young generations. Temple is very necessary and important place for Buddhist monks to conduct Buddhist practicing meditation, observing moral precepts, developing wisdom, leading to peace and happiness. We hope you will support the project by voting to approve without any delays. Thank you for your time and consideration. Bye, have a good evening. So yeah, that's my daughter. I appreciate everybody taking the time out. I'm from San Jose as well, but spend the majority of my time now in Los Angeles uh, because I work in uh, digital recording and fields that been a mixed bag as far as support from the city. And I have worked with the Seven Trees Youth Center. So any opportunity there is to give youth a voice and my daughter to connect with her culture as well, I'm 100% in support of. So I hope San Jose can make a difference as opposed to how it's been in the past with the mixed bag, and they can go all in on this on supporting the special, unique group of individuals. Thank you. Okay, I have Kara Haas, Wayne, David, Bach, T-H-A-C-H, Dune Wynn, Sean, Shanda Nanda and Mora, if you could come on down. I've also called um, names that haven't come down yet, Damien Locally and Sean Bryson. And just before you begin, if I, I appreciate everyone's enthusiasm. Given that we have over 100 people waiting to speak in the interest of efficiency, I'm just going to ask everyone to refrain from applause, please. Thank you so much, and go ahead. Good evening, Mayor and City Council members. My name is Kara Haas, and my family and I have been a part of the San Jose community since the mid-1980s when we first arrived as refugees from Cambodia. As a clinical psychologist, I have had the privilege of working with the San Jose Cambodian community for the past 25 years, particularly leaders and survivors of the genocide, many whom are here today to join me in supporting the proposed temple. As you know, Cambodian refugees and immigrants are survivors of the Khmer Rouge atrocities. However, to this day, many of their mental health needs remain unmet due to the lack of culturally competent services available to support them. Research also suggests that religious coping, spirituality, and faith-based approaches are essential to trauma recovery. And this highly includes access to support from faith-based communities. For Cambodians in particular, religious coping have helped them make sense of their traumatic past and has been associated with decreased psychological distress. Studies have also found that more, the more actively that they are engaged in their culture and religion, the more they seem to thrive. For many Cambodian survivors, a cure may not be possible and healing may never be final. How Thank you, next speaker. Thank you. Hello, RCD Castle. 
Uh, my name is Wang. I uh, live here in San Jose for uh, 30 years and uh, live uh, and work here for 30 years. So I'm here to support Khmer Temple and uh, want to say thank you. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Hello, everyone. My name is David, and I'm a resident and former student of San Jose State. I want to show support for the construction of the temple because the community means a lot to me, and the temple will help preserve our heritage. It is a safe space for many people who want to learn more about the Khmer culture and history, and for those who want to help contribute to the greater global community. Uh, the monks have been very supportive in the development of our youth, and in return, I would love for them to have a dedicated space to continue their teachings. I hope you can join me in supporting this project. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next speaker. Thank you. I, I believe in activists in temple and church will make us in a peaceful mind. In my feeling, there is no difference in the nature of religion. We have to do good to others. I have one story. Seven years ago, I started my car to go to my store. Three boys with skateboard walking on the opposite of the street. They are homeless. Uh, it suddenly rained. One boy asked me if I can drive to him to Pacifico. I'm living in Mirbury at that time. I said, okay, then I drive in the car. He told me they came from north to south on foot. So I then give them money and tell them take a long distance bus. It's very cheap. After later, I heard one guy told his friend he praying whole day for help. That's all I said. Every religion. Uh, share the same nature. I suppose the church and suppose the temple. Thank you. Thank you. Can you step over here for a sec? Next speaker. No, sir. Okay. Right, we just need to get your name. Good evening. Hello, my name is Vata Touch. I immigrated here as a refugee in the 80s from South Vietnam. Representation is extremely important for me and many Asian Americans, especially being Khmer Krom American. Before my escape, I was a monk and a Khmer teacher. There were not any public government support school for Khmer Krom. We solely depend on our community and continue teaching Khmer and Theravada Buddhist teaching to pass on our heritage and tradition. This temple will be monumental for our community here. As an elder and active community member, I believe education and research are the key to keeping our culture and Khmer Krom name alive. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Hi, good evening, uh, everybody, and good evening to uh, Major and City Council. My name is uh, Mora Tat. I am a resident of San Jose since 1982, and a father of three kids, uh, six children, grandchildren, and I and my family strongly support the proposal of the temple at 2470 at uh, Ruby. So you know why? Because our background is very important to have a temple over there. It's a good place for us to do space of worship. And the place is not only a temple, the play for community, the play for teaching our children to do the performing uh, their culture and they uh, to understand that where they're coming from and we are the refugees since the open in San Jose. And uh, thank you very much for your time for Mitch, everyone, and city council. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Thank you, dear Honorable Mayor and members of the City Council. My name is uh, Chandananda. I'm representing the uh, uh, Buddhist uh, community, Theravada Buddhist community disseminated in California. So I strongly uh, support the proposed temple. And having a temple, I believe that it's not only a place for worship, rather it's a center for the practice of spirituality. That is what the Buddhism is all about. Um, the loving kindness, compassion, and the uh, sharing, caring, that's all what we practice. And it, it doesn't have a, a particular religious label. So I hope that uh, this temple will provide and bring about peace and harmony 
and also the well-being, spiritual well-being to the whole, uh, all walks of life. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Um, next speaker, go ahead and step forward. Um, I'm also calling Bo Chan Hui Somneng from Vuthi, and it looks like in Prom, I N P R O M. Thank you. Go ahead. Hi, Mayor, Council, Council members. My name is Damian Maker. I'm actually a resident that lives in the uh, Norwood Ruby area. I actually reside right across the street from the proposed temple. Um, let me just first say our neighborhood is actually very diverse and very accepting. There is no racism. There's no hate towards a temple or church or anything. That, we actually welcome it. What our concern is with the potential rezoning and the special permitting to allow uh, large, large gatherings, you know, seven days a week, potentially, uh, from 7 a.m. to midnight, that's our concern. We are a, a very quiet neighborhood, um, and we just want to maintain that, and that's all we're looking to do. I can also speak to the fact that in regards to our, that intersection is a very busy intersection, tons of accidents. I have lots of recordings of all kinds of pedestrian accidents, vehicle accidents, bicyclists, I've even had a drunk driver drive through our front yard who was actually coming from a wedding at a nearby uh, temple or something along that line. So, next speaker. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Bo Chun Hui, and I'm a 1.5 generation Cambodian American as well as an artist whose inspiration comes from our culture and community. Growing up, the Khmer Temple was a way that I maintained my connection with this community. The temple was not just a place for worship, but also a place where refugees and immigrants of all ages and backgrounds intermingled and gave me perspective into what true community is. In addition to having a safe haven to worship, the temple offered cultural enrichment through traditional dance, musical ensemble, and language classes. These experiences not only helped heal us, but helped empower us to lead better lives. San Jose has long been a great metropolitan city known as being both successful, inclusive, and has prospered on this motto. I truly believe that having a community temple for worship and integration will benefit all San Jose residents as a whole. Embracing another cultural meeting place helps advance the image of San Jose as well as helps create the environment that has been admired by all cities across the U.S. Please vote yes for the temple. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Dear Honorable Mayor and mayor, members of the City Council, my name is Prumbes. I strongly support the Prosperous Temple because monks cannot live without temple. Also, temple is a place to do good that for all people. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. My name is In Prum. Prum In. Uh, first of all, I would like to respect to all men and uh, good evening on Major City Council member and all friends. Okay. Yes. For, first of all, I would like to express my strong support to the proposed pro project work my company Gram. Yeah. As well as many people, I have learned and practiced the teaching of the Buddha and experienced that the Buddhist temple is a place of peace for all mankind and has always been a place of quiet uh, introspection and serenity. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to repeat. Um, Som Neng Prom Vuthe so Yung, and then I'm also adding Savi Yem, Thuk Han, Chen Farun, Prum Ve, and Sa Dud Son. And if you could say your first name when you get to the microphone so we know who has spoken, I appreciate that. Thank you. Dear Honorable Mayor and members of City Council, I am Patricia I live in San Jose. I support to help Temple. 
and I want its project workable because temple is very important to maintain Buddhist uh, tradition and our cultures. Especially, temple is a mainstay for people to do all kinds of wholesome action and religious activity. And it also a place to educate people to become good citizens in society in accordance with the teaching of the Buddha. And they can lead their lives in righteous way. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Hello. So, um, good evening for the on on the three and the uh, mayor of the city council. And my name is uh, Sawi Yam, and I'm strongly support to the um, the proposals of the uh, Khmer Krom because uh, the Buddhist temple is very important and play rules uh, for significant to the the society. Um, the first one is the, to preach out about the culture. It means that the, the Buddhist temple is the uh, center of the culture and also can uh, uh, preach out all the information or um, the everything that from the uh, Cambodia to the first generation, second generation, and the third generation that were born in uh, the U.S. So we open the temple is not for the place smoking. We open the temple thank is you. not for the place uh, drinking beer. Yes, thank you. Next speaker. Okay, thank you. Good evening, Hon Mayor City Council member and all my dear blessing to all of you. My name is Jen Perun. And <clears throat> the first of all, I would like to express my strong support to propose project what Khmer uh, Krom, Cambodia Krom. As well as my many people, I have learned and practiced to teach out the Buddha and experience that the Buddhist temple is a place of peace for all mankind and has always been a place for quiet <coughs> introspection and serenity. The Buddhist temple did not cause harm and disturb being to its neighbor. It also is a resident of the man. And the finally, I show this. Thank I strongly believe that the Khmer Kampuchea Crown Temple project will come to shoot as you. a part. Okay, thank you. Next speaker. Good evening, honorable mayors and city council members and all friends who are here. Uh, I'm Bunton Says. Uh, I come here, as I strongly support to the proposed uh, projects of Khmer Krom's, Khmer Krom Krom temples, because the temple is the best place for all the Cambodian communities, but also for uh, the body who uh, follow Buddhism and also, you know, for the young generation, especially the old people that came from Cambodia as refugees, they really need the temples because temple is the best place for them to come together and to preserve the customs, our cultures, and also our mother language. And also, uh, we uh, do uh, come from a, a small communities in uh, uh, the United States. We only have the temple to find each other. You know, sometimes they cannot find their family members, but only the temple is the best place for them to, to find you. their members. Thank you so much. Thank Next you. Next speaker. Thank you. Also, um, So Kiao, um, Vevol, V E V O L E, Omned. Good evening. Come on down. Go ahead. Go ahead. Good evening, the Honorable Mayor and the members of the City Council. My name is Don Sons. I'm living at San Jose City. 
And uh, I strongly support for the proposed Khmer Kampuchea Krom temples because we are from the southern part of Vietnam, the indigenous people. The temple plays a very important part, not only the holy place for worshiping, but it also a place to preserve our tradition and custom. And we need a place, a proper place, to perform the Buddhist activities for Buddhist monks to celebrate giving ordination and giving the five precepts to our people every day. And sometimes many kids come to the temples and they hang around and observe the precept and they learn our modern language. It is a very important place for our Cambodian people. We need it. And we hope you all uh, vote for our uh, proposed temple. And thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I'm going to repeat the names I just called in case you didn't hear me. I have Amnod, um, V-E-V-O-L-E, -E, I think it's Vavol, and Sokea. Go ahead. Hello, my name is Vivo Tyke. I want to voice my support for the proposed temple. I'm a 21-year-old, first-generation Kamekum American, born and raised in San Jose. My father, who is also here today, came to the U.S. as a refugee in the hopes of giving my family a chance at a better life. However, Growing up, Khmer Krom American presented challenges. Very few within my school and neighborhood shared the same background as me. My family always stressed the importance of never forgetting where I came from. But on my own, the responsibility of preserving the Khmer language and traditions was a daunting one. I would later find a community that would help with this when I got more involved at a Khmer Krom Buddhist temple in San Jose. I joined its youth group a few years ago. Here, I was able to connect with others and learn about my culture through different classes and events. By supporting this project, Khmer Krom people in our community we we'll have a place where we can safely partake in our cultural and religious practices. And San Jose will be a more inclusive city. Thank you, Mayor and Council, for your time and consideration. Thank you. Next speaker. Uh, thank you. Uh, good evening, uh, Council, uh, City Council member. I am Samnat Panpanya from uh, Wat Khmer Sacramento. I am happy and I want to support uh, Wat Khmer Kampuchea Krom. Uh, because uh, open the temples opens everything all the, for the people. Open the temple everything your eyes. Because the temple is uh, teaching us meditation and everything for temple for people. The temple is uh, uh, the hall in the people from the uh, the people, Khmer people, Thai people, Lao people, everything people. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Good evening, dear mayor and council member. And uh, my name uh, Premsuki. I'm a Buddhist monk from Arizona. So I'm here to represent the <coughs> Buddhist community. And uh, this Buddhist community is helped me a lot. And you know, by the day I'm growing up, you know, uh, surrounding by the people with uh, the re Buddhist religion that helped me shape me to become a better human being. And that's not only happened to me, but also happened to the other unprivileged and unfortunate you know, group of the people that they can get the benefit from the temple. So I would like you to, uh, you know, support the construction uh, and the projects of the uh, Wat Khmer Krom. So thank you so much. Okay, I have Charlotte Kimball, Long Bonat, Bonnet, Seth Vett, Tommy Sim, and Tia Then. Hello, good morning, mayors and members of the city of Consoles. My name is uh, Long Manat, and I strongly support the purpose of what my computer Krom, who has uh, been in San Jose. And I am a Buddhist monk, 
and I want to have a temple because temple is a really good place for all people who want to practice about Buddhism. And Buddhism can have, can have all of you guys that you want to know about the Buddha teaching. Like uh, we say, like uh, Buddhism is not only a religion, but it's uh, the way of life. People can learn and practice. Thank you for your time and, and, cons and consideration. Okay. How's it going? Uh, my name is Tommy Sim. I support the construction. Temples are educational institution for spiritual domain of life, meant to impart knowledge and understanding about life and events with perspective of spiritual soul. Everyone wants a peaceful world, but in order to attain that, we must find peace within ourselves. The Dharma, which is the Buddhist teaching, consists of virtues such as honesty, purity, goodwill, generosity, patience, and so on. And by laying down these foundation to the youth at an early age, a better future can be built because the children are the leaders of tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, next speaker. Good evening, Honorable Mayor and City Council member and all friends. My name is Seta Wade. I wanted to express my strong support to the proposed temple what's Khmer Gamji ground because the temple is a very good place and the place do meditation. Thank you for your time and your consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Um, um, before you go, hold on. I'd also like to call Reagan Lim, um, Sata M, Judy Young, and Jenny Che. Go ahead. Good evening, Honorable Mayor, City Council member, and all friends. Blessing to you all. My name is Dear Ten. I would like to pay my strong support to the proposed council or proposed uh, temple, Wat Khmer Kampuji Ground. I believe that the Khmer Kampuji Ground Temple a project will contribute as part of the cultural diversity to the community uh, with higher respect. I hope Honorable Mayor and City Council members will vote for approval of the proposed project work my company ground. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next speaker. Good evening, Mayor Mahan and the city council members. I stand before you to ask that you support the temple project. The temple will serve as a valuable resource for the community and for students doing research on the Buddhist religion. As a former educator, this center will provide a wealth of knowledge for students to interview members, study cultural aspects, as well as learn and develop an appreciation for diverse culture different from their own. Many times students are asked to research other cultures. This center will provide that knowledge for the students to look for information, interview the members of the, um, of the church. So I ask that you please support this project for the greater good of the community and that it will provide resources that are much needed. Thank you. Thank you, next speaker. Good evening, Mayor Mahan, council members. My name is Judy Young, and I'm here to support the building of Wat Khmer Kampuchea Chrome. The temple to be built at 2740 Ruby Avenue signifies the inclusion and recognition of the Cambodian American contribution to the San Jose community. The Cambodian journey to America has not been easy. Hundreds of thousands of Cambodians settled in the Bay Area after fleeing fields of the killing fields of Cambodia and then long living long years in the refugee camps before coming to the US over 40 years ago. Today, Cambodian Americans are part of the American society. 
The temple is not only a place of worship and spirituality, but a place of education and a place to celebrate the beautiful culture of the Khmer Chrome community. The building of the temple ensures the future generation of Cambodian Americans and San Jose residents that the Cambodian culture, language, and heritage will continue for years to come. I'm also hopeful that the temple will unite the San Jose community. I urge you. you to support the building of the temple. Thank you so much. Next speaker. Good evening. My name is Jenny Chia Vang. I am a survivor of Khmer Rouge regime uh, genocide. I came to the United States in 1984 seeking shelter for a better life and the American dream like many others. We Cambodian people suffer a horrible um, genocide that killed about two million people. My mother was executed by the Khmer Rouge and our family were separated. Our freedom, tradition, culture, and identity were stripped away overnight. Growing up without a mother was very difficult for me. Not only did I lack a mother's love, I have no one to teach me the Khmer uh, proper manner, tradition, and culture. The temple is important to me because it provides an opportunity to connect with activities and tradition from our culture, blessing which include healing assistance to mend trouble, broken and an anxious hearts, and place that we no longer feel alone. When people have access to the temple like this, they can grow, change, and improve their emotional wellness and mental uh, health. Please thank vote you. yes, and thank you so much, Mayor and Council. Nancy Keo, Deanna Kay, um, v Vibel Thok, Sophia Thok, and like, like, it looks like Lyxa Tang, L-Y-X-A. Go ahead. Honorable Council members, you must have already known that the people of Cambodia did not move to the U.S. willingly. They were compelled to move here just to save their lives, while millions of their brothers and sisters were being massacred by the Pol Pot regime. We still recollect with the deepest sense of gratitude the humanitarian support we received from the U.S. government during this difficult time. From then on, we are struggling to stand on our foot. We never had an intention to be in burden to this land. Rather, we wanted to do our best to contribute to this land of opportunity and freedom. Being able to produce doctors, nurses, lawyers, engineers, and so many other essential professionals for the well-being of this community is clear testimony to the fact that we have always been trying to pay our debt of gratitude in the most efficient way possible. Thank you. Today, Next speaker. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. I'm here to support the temple. I'm a resident of San Jose, and I hope you will approve this project. The Khmer community in San Jose is a small one. This temple will preserve a remnant culture nearly wiped out by the Khmer Rouge genocide. We hope this temple will become a cultural heritage, be among a half dozen places in the world dedicated to preserving, supporting, and disseminating the virtues of compassion and tolerance. This is not the first nor only neighborhood in San Jose with a place of worship surrounded by housing. My friend lives in a five wound area, and there are a half dozen places of worship surrounding there. I live in the West Evergreen neighborhood, and there are four places of worship surrounded by housing. If we want fairness, then we should spread places of worship throughout the city. If we live in a just society, then we should allow the building of this temple. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next speaker. Hello, my name is Deanna Kay, and I strongly support the construction of this temple. I'm 17 years old, and I actively attend a Cambodian Buddhist temple in San Jose. Throughout the years of attending, the Khmer Krom community has welcomed me with open arms. These kind people have always greeted me and made me feel like I had a second home, even though I'm not Cambodian. Going to this temple every weekend has not only helped me observe their beautiful heritage and values, but has allowed me to create long-lasting relationships with members. It opened my eyes to unique Cambodian culture, and the construction of this unique 
the, the construction of this new temple will allow people of Kamaikram community to not only attend for religious cause, but enter new states of connection and form unity within Kamaikram people and allow others just like me to come together and maintain Kamaikram culture. I look forward to your approval of our request. Thank you, Mayor and Council, for your time and consideration. Thank you. Next speaker. Good evening, Mayor and Council members. My name is Sophia Taik. I am 16. I strongly support this proposed temple. This temple has my support because it is a sacred place where the Kamaikram community, including myself and my family, can preserve the culture and language. Growing up, I never had any Kamaikram friends and never noticed the importance and beauty of my culture. I've been going to the temple my whole life, but my younger self thought it was just some dull place. In 2019, I've decided to do Robam, which is traditional Cambodian dancing. This has brought me to come to the temple more often. I was a very introverted person, so doing Rulam and going to the temple more has changed me. I've met a lot of Khmer Crown people, and it has made me open up more. The temple has encouragingly brought together community and hold together many bonds, so adding another one will create new connections. Thank you, and I hope you will support our shared vision and morals. Thank you. Um, next speaker, also, um, I have Dr. Richard Dixie. Um, Wagno Dixie, um, Wat, or no, Hong Chiang, and Savet Lam. Go ahead. Hello, Mayor Mahan and the City Council members of San Jose. My name is Lisa. I'm based in San Jose, and I live about 15 minutes away from my local temple. Buddhist temples are an essential part of our religion back in our home country, countries including Cambodia and Vietnam. I video call my family in Vietnam all the time. So I know they are frequently involved with their local temples. My family is very faithful to Buddhism, so it's nice to have these temples in, here in San Jose. We're first generation Americans. You can imagine that we became elated once we found a nice community who shared the same culture and faith. I anticipate that other Khmer, Vietnamese families in their neighborhood will come to relate to how I felt. Temples have also provided opportunities for all families and friends to comfortably practice Buddhism. You may notice that there are a lot of us here in this room. That is because we're a big family and we heavily value our community. So I support the proposed temple, and I hope everyone here will too. Thanks for listening, and thanks to the mayor and city council for your time and consideration. Thank you. Next speaker. Hello, my name is Dr. Richard Dixie. I'm secretary to the International Buddhist Association of America and co-director of the Light of Buddha Dharma Foundation India. I have information that will assist the council in making an informed decision about this application. For the past 17 years, my wife and I have worked closely with Southeast and Asian countries that follow the Theravadan tradition of Buddhism, including Cambodia, Thailand, Laos, Myanmar, and Sri Lanka. All followers of this tradition take the Pancha Shila vow as a cornerstone of their religious practice. These five moral precepts involve prohibitions on killing, stealing, lying, immorality, and the consumption of any drug or alcohol in any form. It's therefore more likely that disturbances due to drunkenness would have happened outside a private house than outside a Cambodian cultural center run by monks. Furthermore, there is no Cambodian tradition of celebrating birthdays, anniversaries, or the new year with fireworks or late night parties. Thank you. Thank you so much. Next speaker. Uh, good evening, Councilman. As president of the International Buddhist Association of America, I'm here to strongly support this project. We also brought the lighting of the lamp in the name of Buddhism to the White House. There are more than 2,400 Buddhist temples in America. This is truly a wonderful project that will bring peace and loving kindness to the community of San Jose. It is not a place for social loud behavior, and Buddhism teaches us that we show up in the best way possible. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Good evening. I'm here in support of this project. My name is Hong Choin. I am a survivor of the Khmer genocide, and I'm a first generation refugee who's lucky enough to be able to start life new in this country. And I'm here in speaking in support of this because education, a link to heritage 
and acts and, and having a sense of belonging is what enables me to thrive in this country. And what and the Khmer population has always been traditionally underserved in across all communities in the US. And I've lived in multiple places in, in different states. What I'm hoping that I'm here to employ you to support this project is because San Jose has an opportunity to help this Khmer community to have that sense of belonging, that sense of identity, so that the community can thrive uh, in this awesome place, this awesome city. So I implore you to please support this project because they are folks like me, I'm Thank generation you. zero, but they are countless generations, my kids and, and other. Thank you. Next speaker, also have Nancy Lee, um, Neri Brendenburg. Hold on, hold on, hold on just a second. <laughs> Nancy <laughs> Lee, Neri Brendenburg, Holy Lamb, and Faisal Yazadi. Now you can go. Sorry. That's okay. Uh, good evening. My name is Svet Lam. Uh, the Cambodian people have been practicing Buddhism for thousands of years, since 1975, when the Khmer refugees stepped on the American soil, we haven't had the real Buddhist temple yet. The temple where the Khmer people not only practice their faith, but also preserve their identity. Throughout our history, the Buddhist temple have been playing a very important role in our life. The temple where people can practice their faith to preserve and enrich their culture and also to teach our children to read, to write our own language, and to teach them to be good and productive citizens. But also our, to exchange our cultural richness with all the different cultures that make America the only one country on Earth that everyone proudly called the best melting pot on the world. Next speaker. Hello, thank you, Honorable Mayor, Council members, and my fellow citizens of this great city of San Jose. My name is Faisal Ezeidi. I'm a resident of Evergreen, a long-term resident. I live within one mile of this proposed site. And if you happen to be in the neighborhood, if you drive around, within one mile radius, you will find at least four or five different denominations, a church, a gurudwara, a mosque, and a number of other religious uh, centers where people practice their faith in peace. Uh, adding yet another house of worship to, will do nothing but enhance the landscape of my neighborhood. Uh, not only it is a true representation of the diversity in the community, it is actually a true representation of our great nation. And that's who we are as America. So my neighborhood of Evergreen is no different than this hall that we have gathered in today. We all come from different walks of life, from different faiths, from different ethnicities and whatnot. I mean, look at the council itself. You represent a collage of ethnic diversity. So what we should be doing today should be coming together as one nation, as one community, and voting in support of this uh, great place, which is going to be Thank you. an example for the future generation. Thank you. Next speaker. <clears throat> Good evening to you all. My name is Holly Lamb. I am 19 years old and I currently live in San Jose, California. I just want to say that I wholeheartedly support this proposed temple. Well, my reasoning for that is because I simply grew up going to a temple and the rest of my family did as well. So hopefully you can imagine this would mean a lot to us. I absolutely love and cherish my community and culture, and I want to be able to keep both of these alive as the Khmer culture is fading as we speak. Being able to interact with my community makes me realize that there are many more of my people out there behind me. It makes me realize how beautiful and precious my culture is. So, Mayor, Council, um, I hope you will approve of this project. Thank you so much for your time and consideration. Thank you, next speaker. Good evening. Good evening, mayors and council members. My name is Nancy. I'm a San Jose resident. 
I'm supporting this project 100%. The reason is I am a suffering a refugees and a survivors. Uh, when we arrive here, it's very tough, it's very hard. We have a very hard time to learn English. And here, the temple is the place where we belong. And we need to have this temple where we keep not just to learn and support and sup not support from the, the, the monks and from the communities. We also gather and keep our cultures, keep our inner peace. And I'm asking you please to support us and just vote for us to have this temple up so that our kids, our new generations that American borns can have followers by the leaders. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'd also like to call Alex Simkyo. Um, Ren um, Ren Talk and Kathy Lee and Bora Lam. Good evening, everyone. My name is Neri Predenberg. I am a San Jose residency, and I also do volunteer works with Khmer Kampuchea Crown Federation as a president chapter in San Jose. I am strongly supporting to have a Khmer Kampuchea Crown Buddhist temple in San Jose for our Khmer's and Khmer Kampuchea Kram people to come and practice Buddhism, culture, and traditions. More so with these happenings, the temple will be such a great gift to our new generations that doesn't have a chance to go to their homeland to see the traditional architectures. I hope you take this consideration and thank you so much for your time. Thank you, next speaker. Good evening, my name is Rain Tatch. I'm here to support the project. A uh, little story about myself. I was a volunteer for City Year in 2000. I also worked for Street of Traffic in 2000. Busy schedule, I was 19 years old. So every evening after I get off work, I stop by the old temple and study. My ultimate goal is to be a firefighter in 2002, I became the first Khmer Krom firefighter in Oakland history, okay? So I hope you guys support this. It's a place for me to study the future for my people. And I have two boys. I taught them about Buddhism every single day, treat people with respect. One thing I do want to bring back to the city of San Jose, this beautiful city, I want to give an annual CPR class when this temple is built. I'll do that for free. Not just for my community, but for the neighbors. So welcome. Thank you. Hi, city council members and mayor. Um, thank you for the time. I wanted to voice <clears throat> my support for this project. Um, we are the temple will become a beacon of hope for our community, but it also serve as a revitalization source for uh, a, a community that's been tested by war and genocide. We are a collective of faith believers, but we're also belongers. And ever since arriving here as refugees, we've only wanted to belong here in the U.S. And here and now, we have a chance to give back to this community via this temple. Uh, the temple will help our youths learn about their culture and their beautiful traditions. It's a spiritual center for everyone. And it allows our elders to continue being involved in this faith with their children. Religious centers have always belonged, and I say, strive in neighborhoods. So I thank you for your time. Thank you. Next speaker. I'd also like to call down um, Fuang Thok and Vatha. Go ahead. Uh, hello, good evening. Um, Honorable Mayor Matt Mayhem and uh, City Council members. My name is Chris Tass. I live in San Jose. I also graduated from San Jose State. So I'm here to uh, support for uh, the Khmer Kamboja um Temple Project. And I'm also seeing for your approval. So it's because it's very important for me and my family and my community. So 
I'm here uh, asking for your approval for the project. That's all. Thank you for your time and sincerely appreciate it. Thank you. Hello and good evening, Jim So, family members, council member, and parents, familiar faces. My name is Alexander Sim Gao. I was born and raised here in San Jose. Uh, the Khmer Buddhist Temple means a lot and dear to many of us Cambodian Kampuchea crowd living here in San Jose. That includes myself. By moving forward with this move, not only does it help us keep our, our culture and our tradition alive, but it is also a place for many Cambodian and American, Cambodian American living here in San Jose to come together to practice our belief. This will also set a higher standard for our Cambodian community, for everyone of all ages, elders, adolescent, kids, and youth. That's exactly what we need for this community. A place to worship, the core to hold and find our identity. We will do our best to promote carpools and with that being of one of the issue of parking, I also we will also find alternative and providing a safe environment. Thank you for your time. Hello, my name is Kathy. Thank you for considering this proposal. I am born and raised in San Jose and a member of the Khmer Kampuchiklam Temple Community, along with being a member of the Youth Khmer Kampuchiklam. Since a baby to being nearly 21, I've came to this temple nearly every week of my whole life. It's a huge part of my identity and helped became who I am today. Being a part of this community has made such a huge impact to me and my family. Not only are we gathered with the community who is just like us, we are also participating in our religion, our culture, and paying our respects to the Buddha and the temple. As being a part of the youth of Khmer Kampuchikram, and now the director and the teacher of the Khmer Classical classical dance we hold at the temple, we believe in learning the history and traditions of our culture so that we can educate current generations and future generations. Please vote yes. Thank you, Mayor and Council, for your consideration. Um, before you speak, I'd also like to call, it looks like Parasith, I, the handwriting's really small, um, Parasith Thok, Ainsworth Leslie, Aiden Leslie, and Anthony. Go ahead. Thank you. Good evening, council member and mayor. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming. Um, I just want to support our project, our temples project, um, especially in the neighborhood because there's a lot of seniors that are uh, live nearby that like to go to uh, to the temple to help uh, the monks with the food. Uh, in our tradition, um, monks cannot cook for themselves. They're depending our our seniors or our people who are available every day to stop by for them one meal a day. So that's uh, the only seniors that can do that daily because the rest of us are busy working. So I just wanna thank you for your time, Council and Amir. Thank you. Thank you, next speaker. Good evening, Mayor, City Council members. My name is Ainsworth Leslie. I've had the privilege of sharing the Cambodian culture for the last 22 years. <clears throat> Excuse me. Myself, among, as well as my three children, have had an opportunity to experience, share, and experience the Cambodian culture at the Old Temple. I believe a new, safe environment for themselves, the seniors, the adults that share that culture, and pass on that culture would be very beneficial. I understand the concerns of the neighbors, but I do believe once completed, I think there'll be great benefits among one particular area is that it's a shared environment and a shared culture. San Jose has been an inclusionary city and has always given the benefit of the doubt to minorities. The Cambodian people are a minority in Thank this you. community. I look forward to your approval, and I do support it, and my, my children support it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next speaker. Hello. Hello, 
Mr. Mayor and the City Council member. My name is Anthony. Um, I'm here today because that piece of land is right behind the, the wall of my house. Okay. Um, I have a question. I sit in back there. I listen to them talking a lot about like, the temple. I have a question for them, and probably most of you have the same question for them. Where have they been the whole time without this temple? Where did they go to worship? Without this temple, they can go anywhere else. And all the trouble that happened in the neighborhood, they don't know because they're just a visitor. If this temple got built up, we are the resident. We live here. We explain all the bad things happen all day long, week, months. I see that we outnumber by support and against. I'm here to totally against it. Mr. Mayor and the city council member, when the time comes to make your decision, and please look from the bottom of your heart, and if this is somebody come into your neighborhood or your house and start to build something around your house, would you be happy about it? Thank you. Please next help speaker. us. Um, before the next speaker goes, I have, um, the last name is Chahal. The first name starts with a K. Um, Angkor, Morali, and it looks like David Sarant. Go ahead. All right. Hello. My name is Aiden Leslie. I'm a Cambodian descent and a student at San Jose State University. One of the reasons why the creation of a temple would do the city good is because it has a large Cambodian population, which makes an ideal location for a Buddhist temple. Building a temple here would provide a place for the community to gather, worship, and connect with their heritage and learn more about other traditions. San Jose is a diverse city that celebrates many cultures, and adding a temple would add to this cultural richness. San Jose is a popular tourist destination, and a Cambodian temple would be a unique attraction that would draw visitors to the city. It would also provide an opportunity to showcase Cambodian culture and history to a wider audience. It would be a beautiful place where people can come together and strengthen their bonds with one another. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Thanks for giving me the time, Mayor and the Councils. I'm here. I'm voting no to rezoning. The reason residents have the right to live. This is a residential area, and this particular church is not compatible for them. And there is a school. And you know, the, it's a hazard to the seniors and the schools. We have already problem for the accidents. It is not a good place to build this church. We are not against the church. There are the other place, which is an open space, they can build it. Please, I vote no. And even when they have decided to build the church, they should not have even think about because it's going to cause health and safety and emotional and the people when they will be building what about anybody will be doing this thank you all the time thank you next thank speaker you. i hope you will consider Hi, good evening. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, my name is Aang Kaur. I'm a resident uh, near the proposed site. And we have heard a lot about the virtues of Buddhism, and I believe that's true. But at the same time, you just heard the stress and anxiety of a previous speaker, right, coming here to express the approval of this project. And on addition, um, the firm that was hired by the backers of this project has threatened to sue the city in case that you guys decide to reject the application. It is inconsistent with Buddhism to me, right? And we talk about peace, but it causes anxiety to the neighbors. And it's a win at all costs, bringing all the supporters outside of the community. I have propose certain things, email to you, and you can consider that. I don't have time to talk about this federal law, R-L-U-I-P-A, that's used to threaten the city. So that's not necessary. 
And I urge all the supporters to use what the Buddhism teach, restraint, respect, and patience to work this through. Thank you. Nick, um, there is a, a group of people, um, Nick is the first one of them who will be speaking in a particular order. They each have one minute and they have slides. So those of you who know who you are, go ahead and line up in the order you know you're supposed to be in. Um, Nick Pham is the first one and then I can't read the handwriting. Like I said, it looks like David Sirach. Um, Susie, um, LOL2, so if you guys could, but um, Susie, if you already spoke earlier, because we've already had two Susies speak, if you're the same Susie, you can't speak again. Okay, go ahead. All right. All right. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Council members, uh, good to see you. Well, you heard a lot of supporters that actually talk about, you know, the fact that they would like for you to support a temple. Um, the neighbors, a group of neighbors actually got together. Sorry. So I'm going to start again, if I may. Um, you heard a lot of the supporters telling you, asking you to support a temple, a place of worship. And the neighbors have consistently come back and ask for the councils and staff and everyone, the applicant, to consider all of the policy that it doesn't meet and all of the impact to the local residents that it's gonna you know, uh, be huge. There's a slide deck, uh, there's a slide, a set of slide that I printed because I know we're not gonna have enough time, one minute's not enough, that I would love for you to go through the slide as we you know, go through the evening. Look at each of the slides and look at each of the policy that I called out that is not compatible, it's not consistent. The three policy that staff mentioned are not even meeting the project. I mean, it's not, the project doesn't meet those requirements. SB 330 is a state bill that the applicant is saying that this is a state bill that allowed them to rezone. Thank you. From PQP. <laughs> anyway, please look at the slide. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Councilman, Council people, uh, I'm Dave Shirallo. I live on Sweet Leaf Court, um, <clears throat> which is the property uh, directly adjacent to the proposed um, project. i uh, lived in that property for the last uh, 40 years plus, and um, basically we oppose, or I oppose the project for some of the following reasons. Really, it doesn't meet the uh, city's master plan it won't reflect the character of the neighborhood whatsoever. And again, I, I really want to emphasize the, the importance of, we're not against that, the, the building of the temple, it's just that location that it sits on is not appropriate size for that. But anyway, the PQP has all the characteristics of a commercial facility, so weddings, banquets, amplified sound, uh, designated smoking areas, and so forth. I mean, and this would all be uh, coming towards our way as it all echoes thank in you. that area. Thank so, you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Didi, and I live on Sweet Leaf, which is connected directly to the temple. And I oppose the rezoning of this property because due to traffic concerns, my daughter was a victim of a no-stop sign right in that corner. And then also because the Senate Bill 330 is a temporary bill signed to address the need of housing, not a private gathering facility. The SB 330 does not justify the request for the zone change to build a 14,000 square feet private gathering. So I'm asking you to oppose this project. Thank you. Thank you, next speaker. Good evening, my name's Linda. Um, 
I live on Americus Avenue, and I oppose this project. I don't want it rezoned, and I would, I'm pleading with you guys to listen to the, to the community. We're outnumbered, obviously. We are a quaint, small community, and I have something about the general plan policies in the state bill that the project did not meet or it wasn't mentioned in the staff report. The following policies are that weren't met is LU-11-.4, LU-11.6, VN-1-11, VN-5.4, CD-4.9, and CD-4.9. Point one two. Those have a lot to do with the character, our neighborhood, um, the, the thread of what our neighborhood is all about. And we really are pleading with you guys to listen to our side of the story. Thank you. Thank Next you. speaker. Greetings. Um, thanks for we, that we have this forum that all voices can be heard, so I'm very grateful for that. My name is Michael Gabler. I'm the president of the Norwood Neighborhood Association. I represent about 1,250 homes just on the other side of Ruby from this proposed project. I'm a strong supporter of a temple. I'm, a very, I'm very opposed to it at this location. Part of the reason is it is a big project that's been shoehorned. And if you really take a look at this, it's shoehorned into this little plot of land to, to give them what they want. If you, if you look back to what was said tonight, they said they've greatly downsized this project. It tells you what they originally had in planned, had planned for this. So this property was originally approved for eight or for six homes. When this was brought to uh, to staff, they said this was incompatible, um, and and now it's going to uh, uh, PQP. What in doing PQP makes this compatible? Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Hello, good evening. Uh, my name is my name is Karina, uh, resident of Grossbrook Hill Park neighborhood, and I'm opposing this project. You can see at the first slide. That's a example of the facility that is consistent with general plan. Is uh, uh, this one? what the applicant <clears throat> want to do in that particular lot. You can see that it is inconsistent and incom incompatible with the entire residential neighborhood. It is beautiful, but it just 100% not fit into the entire neighborhood design. Thank you. Thank you, next speaker. May it please the mayor and the council. My name is Frank, and I'm a resident adjacent at the intersection there. Freedom of religion is a beautiful thing. I support it. This plot of land, this intersection, this venue is inconsistent and incompatible. It's unequivocally unreasonable. Um, even after scaling back the, commercial, the, the operational plan of the facility, it's, it's still almost a burden in this particular res residential neighborhood. The freedom of religion, the promotion, all the uh, emotional well-being, it's great, I'm all for that. This particular intersection though, it would create congestion, it would create exponential traffic, um, it's, it's just an inconvenient plot and corner of land in, an, in a typically a historical residential neighborhood. I understand they've put in four years of planning this, I put in decades of my life in the pursuit of, of my family's happiness and peace. So it's just an inconvenient location. Um, Having consecutive days of celebration combined with a uh, practice and long operating hours, it's just an incompat incompatible venue. Uh, thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you. Next speaker. Hi, my name is Mazen, and I live within 100 feet of this uh, proposed facility. I urge you to deny the uh, this facility and deny the PQP zoning. And my reasons are... For events, buses will be carrying visitors from local elementary school using small residential street on any day of the week. This is a major safety problem. 
how can the city enforce codes in a residential neighborhood if PQP rezoning is allowed? How is rezoning of a residential lot from R15 to PQP to make something fit where it does not fit a good decision? That's like fitting, trying to fit a, a round circle in a square. And then uh, another issue is the alcohol plus 300 people in the middle of a residential zone is a serious public safety concern, especially when people drive after an event. And the idea Thank that you. we're making up these wedding and alcohol, Thank it's you. right Next. in your uh, operation plan. Hello, Council, and to Mayor Mahan Go Bells <laughs> from high school. Uh, my name is Mark de Guzman, and I believe I have, uh, with the permission of Tony Tabor, that I have extended time because I am autistic. Um, I have lived in the Evergreen uh, neighborhood for 35 years, and, though, and although I am 42, about to turn 43 next month, I am also autistic. At first, I didn't seem to mind of what kind of building was going to be built on the property. However, when I learned and heard about that, about that a Buddhist temple was going to be built, my views have changed. In terms of geographical location, having a temple built here would result, would cause traffic problems since one of the streets at the cross intersection is narrow. There are also nearby houses and residents who would have problems trying to leave or park their cars there. In addition, if there are any loud sounds or music that is played which would be associated with their religious beliefs, because I am autistic, I would have sensitivity issues to that, especially if I am asleep at night. Already, there is supposed to be a wall that is to be built at one of my neighbor's houses, and during some holidays, fireworks are being set off within my neighborhood, which is not making the problem any better. Likewise, because my older brother lives down the street from me, it would cut off one of my routes to his house. Lastly, as an active and avid uh, Pokemon Go player trainer, although I enjoy playing the game, if a Pokestop or a gym, not a workout gym, but a Pokemon gym, were to be set up within the game after the temple is built, it would cause a distraction to any drivers who pass through this location. This includes the use of such in-app items like the daily adventure incense, which can only be used when movement is detected, such as driving, walking, and biking. Likewise, and as to reiterate, because at least one, of the, one corner of the intersection has no sidewalk, it is possible that trainers like myself could slow down traffic at this site, most especially if the Pokemon gym is set up and a raid takes place. While I am sure my fellow neighbors have better ideas and solutions of how the property can be used than what I would be able to think of, it would be nice to see something such as a fruit stand, a mom and pop cafe, or a general store that could be built there. To have a Buddhist temple built on this property would be geographically obstructive and also major problems not only to me, but also to my fellow neighbors. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next speaker. Good evening. My name is Angie Sorello. I am a longtime resident of Norwood Avenue, and I love my neighborhood. I'd venture to guess how many people present today live in our neighborhood. The proposed project is too large and inconsistent for the neighborhood. Other public comments indicate that 300 plus people uh, is anticipated. I wonder how many of those uh, present aren't residents of the neighborhood. How many people would a 14,000 square foot facility hold? Bottom line, growth is inevitable. Applicants and members ignore the unreasonable size, traffic, and non-conforming policies. Alcohol serving is consistent with operating plan. Applicants clearly stated in PC meetings that this is a private gathering facility. Any project approved on this site should be in harmony with the surrounding existing structures and our neighborhood. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Next speaker. 
Mayor Mahan and uh, Council members, thank you for the opportunity to speak. My name is John Ritchie. I've been living in the Evergreen uh, neighbourhood for 13 years. I live within a thousand feet of this proposed temple, and we all agree on this side that it's a bad idea. Um, we're small. Uh, we don't have the deep pockets of the billionaire fund uh, backers of this project. We're a small group of neighbours. Uh, we like the peace and quiet of the neighbourhood, and we like to keep it that way. Um, we can see that many of the speakers that, who have been here earlier today um, do not live in the neighbourhood. They don't know what the neighbourhood's like. I take a walk around the neighbourhood every day, and I pass that location. And it is just completely incompatible with uh, the neighbourhood. If you look at some of the, the uh, the political donations that have come from, from the backers of this. There's over $200,000 of political donations that have been made to this. And my ask to you on Thank behalf you. of the neighbourhood today is don't let those donations sway your vote. Please vote no for this, uh, this ill-advised Ill project today. Thank you. Good evening, uh, Mayor and Kelsey members. My name is Tisa Fan. I live in uh, 27, 20 Ruby Avenue, about 15 years. Please don't build the temple around my house, and my house is in the middle of the projects. Please say no to rezoning. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Uh, good evening, Mayor and uh, Council Members. Uh, my name is Brandon Tran, and I live in the middle of uh, this project at two, uh, 2720 Ruby Avenue. Uh, I came here to oppose this uh, rezoning, and I am worried about the privacy and the amount of noise that it will, uh, this temple will make, and I'm worried about me and my family's safety, as well as the other neighbors. Uh, please say no to the rezoning, and uh, thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you. Next speaker. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and Council Members. I'm Fang Chang, living in 2720 Ruby Avenue. The house, my house is right in the middle of the temple project. Please say no to rezoning. Please consider if the big temple building around your only 900 square feet like my house and around all residential house. What do you think? Please save my family. And thank you very much for listening. Before the last speaker from this group goes, I'm going to call down Joseph Kostmeyer, um, Yuka Ng, and Fred Mayer. Go ahead. Good evening, uh, Mr. Matham, Mahan Mayor and Council Member. I'm Nya I live in uh, 2720 Ruby Avenue, um, the house at the middle of the Temple Project. I'm here to bet all of you please say no to rezoning. Might have only 900 square feet um, to the temple built around my house. Um, please consider if your house in the middle of this project, please put your shoe in my shoe. What do you think will you support this project? I would like to ask all the people here, nobody live in the neighborhood. Please put your shoe in my shoe. If your house at the middle of this big project, what do you think? So please, please say no to rezoning. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Mahan Mayor and all the council members. Please, please stay my family. Thank you. Um, I'm going to repeat the names of Joseph Cost Mayor, um, Yuka Ng, Fred Mayor, um, Nelitoy Kostmeyer, Tuan Nyo. I don't see anybody coming, so I'm going to continue calling names. Um, Sajitha Kim, Ryan Baum, or Baun, B O U N. Okay, I, I see people coming down. So I do have about eight more cards after these names. Good evening, mayor and council members. 
I'm here in support of the Khmer Temple project. As, as a refugee who has survived the horror of war, I know firsthand the challenges that comes with starting a new life in a new country. The pain and suffering, hatred, oppression, and loss can be overwhelming. It can be difficult to find a sense of belonging in a new community. I understand that some of you have concerns about the building of the Buddhist temple in this community, and some of you are worried about noises and traffic and alcohol. Let me tell you, Buddhist is not serving alcohol. Buddhist is about peace and prosperity and community. And that may come with such project. With these concerns, I can see that they are, some of them are valid with the noise and, and many people. Thank you. Hello, my name is Ryan Boone. Um, I hope to assuage some of the nimbiest concerns of some of the neighbors um, by saying that the uh, traffic, um, or the, the events of the temple happen outside of the school hours when uh, there are drop-offs and pick-up. Um, my, my dad, though he's born in Cambodia, came of age in Evergreen, going to Leva Middle School and Silver Creek High School. Uh, I was born in Evergreen. Um, and my dad took a picture of my younger brother and myself in matching overalls on the site uh, of Evergreen Valley High School when it was freshly leveled. Um, I went to Millbrook Elementary School and uh, Quimby, Mi or Millbrook Elementary School and Quimby Middle School and Evergreen Valley High School. Um, in the past 20 years that my family and I have lived there, 20 plus years, um, there has been a, an addition of a wonderful mosque and a very um, beautiful Sikh uh, Gurdwara. Um, adding to the beautiful uh, vitality of the neighborhood. Uh, though I'm not, thank though I am Khmer, I'm not Khmer Kraum. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Janelle Calixto um, Samboy Lee, S R O U Y Sru, and Sofan. Go ahead. Thank you. My name is Young Wen. I have lived in San Jose for almost um, 20 years now. I have three kids. I was born and raised in San Jose as well. Before this, I uh, lived in Oakland where someone famously said, there's no there in Oakland until someone built a there and said, there it is. Um, I believe this temple to be a beautiful gift, not only to the Cambodian community, but to all um, citizens of San Jose. Um, at the temple, uh, my three kids have learned how to um, do uh, traditional Cambodian dance. My mother-in-law learned how to uh, read Cambodian texts so she could read the Buddhist texts. And for myself, um, I get to um, learn more about uh, Buddhism, uh, why do we uh, do the things that we do. So it's, um, it's been an important uh, place, not just for me, but also for my kids. I uh, do urge you to please approve the building of the temple. Thank you. Thank you, next speaker. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. My name is Janelle Chun, and I'm proud to stand here today to represent the Cambodian community on supporting the build of this new temple. I believe preserving the culture and the tradition is very important, especially when having children born here in the United States. I want my children to understand where they come from to carry out the great values of tradition. Although I'm not Cambodian, but I'm married to one, and I was born and raised on the island of Guam, and I grew up learning my own traditions and living the experience in my own country. However, living here in California, I've learned so much about this beautiful culture through the rituals, the stories, music, food, and language. As a parent, I am a firm believer of embracing culture when it comes to my children. However, it breaks my heart to know I'm unable to give them the same upbringing but by building this temple, it will allow our future generations to make their own experience and to live out the legacy for generations to come. While those who deny this build and complain about the noise, the traffic. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and Council Member. My name is Sam Bonis. You know, um, Cambodian refugee we settled in the U.S. over 40 years ago. We have been forgotten. Our pain and suffering are still with us every single day. 
having this temple serving as a healing center for our elders and youth to come together so that they can speak in the same language, so that they can share their pain and suffering. Uh, approving this request, you're helping us address equity disparities in our communities, and I hope that you will approve your know, request for this temple. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Um, also, Vasitha Thax, please come on down. Good evening. My name is Calixto Manriquez. Um, I've been a 40-year resident of Evergreen. I'm also, for 35 years, a real estate appraiser, so I understand land use, neighborhoods, and traffic. I support the construction of the temple for religious, cultural, historical reasons, but not at this location. Um, the traffic on that intersection is horrendous at times. There's been many people who have been uh, run the stoplight and Light. crashed into houses. It's that location is not compatible right in the smack dab of that neighborhood. We have other religious uh, uh, temples that have been built on the periphery of the neighborhood, and I can see that as a beautiful, better location for this uh, Buddhist temple. Um, so again, I, I support it, but not at this location. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. My name is Safan Chun, and I'm here to support the build of the temple. Um, I grew up in a rough neighborhood, surrounded by poverty, crime, and drugs. In middle school, my brother and I walked to school, uh, crossing the path, uh, crossing the roller tracks through gang territory. And one day, a car pulled up, and a shotgun was pointing at my brother and I. We ran as fast as we could, but they caught up to us, and four adults jumped us. We never made it to school. Instead, we walked to the neighborhood temple. The monks fed us and nursed our wounds while we waited for our parents to pick us up. And I remember being angry and wanting to seek vengeance. Uh, one of the monks asked us to participate in a prayer, and that day I learned that violence doesn't solve anything. I support the build of this temple. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Good evening. Mayor and council members, I believe I'm the last speaker for today, so hopefully your energy has not drained yet. I'm gonna make this uh, sweet and short. Um, I have come prepare um, to give my regards why I'm supporting the project. However, uh, most of the supporters, especially the uh, uh, venerable monks, they have already um, expressed how I would like to, to express, so I have really nothing else to say. Um, temple is um, no doubt the uh, place of worship and uh, a place for healing. However, I would like to um, so I'll switch my direction to answer or, or to respond to one of the gentlemen who opposed the project asking why or asking where have we been before we are proposing this, um, this construction. We have been um, using a single home size family as a temporary um, place to practice our, our um, religion. Thank you. However, okay, thank you. Um, going online, um, I have called all the speaker cards. If uh, you turned in a speaker card, did not hear your name, um, you can go ahead and come down. Just make sure you say your name so we can move the speaker card. But I am gonna move over um, to the Zoom um, attendees. So if you're on Zoom and you wanna speak on this, followed by Mahul. Yay, thank you. Okay, my name is Janet, and I'm a neighbor to the project. Um, I've been invested with my neighbors on this process over the years. Hundreds of residents have said that they don't feel that we're being heard, like the Tran family whose private home is in the middle of this project. If you should decide to vote to approve this project, additional conditions should be added like eliminating outdoor amplification. I've asked for more in writing uh, additional conditions. A question from tonight's meeting is if no liquor is served, which has been said by several people now, then I'm, I, I don't know why it's on the application. That's been a big concern to many neighbors. 
I don't know how you're going to vote tonight. This is an immense pressure from the applicant to build. Your leadership is needed should you vote to approve by adding reasonable conditions to mitigate the traffic safety and noise. Thank you. Mahul followed by Albert. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, so, um, um, if residential dis uh, zone district and general plan support a place of worship in a residential location, why is the applicant seeking to rezone to PQP? Uh, that was one of the questions for the applicant, and um, that's the reason for my no to rezoning. Um, 14,000 square feet of private gathering with amplified sound alcohol permit is primarily meant for hosting parties. If that is not true, then do not ask for rezoning permits in this application. Use the same zone which is currently applied to this location. I welcome this temple. I welcome all the religions in my neighborhood, but the scale at what it is being proposed is not compatible with this neighborhood boxing in Albert, followed by Michelle. Albert, A L B E R. Okay, I'm going to move on to Michelle. Good evening, Michelle Liu, CEO of the Health Trust in San Jose. I respectfully request your approval of the temple project. At the Health Trust, a local nonprofit, we strive for everyone in Silicon Valley to be as healthy as possible. The proposed temple will support local residents' health and well being, especially for Cambodian elders who survived genocide in their home country. Thanks so much for your support. Caller 1609. One six zero nine. I see you're unmuted, but we don't hear you. Uh, my name is Ruben. I'm speaking on behalf of my 94 year old mother that has resided in her home for over 40 years. She is a fence line neighbor. Uh, all the traffic that travels in and out of the applicant's parking lot will affect her quality of life. The applicant has the means to place this project anywhere in the county of Santa Clara, yet they're leaving a landlocked site for another landlocked site. The applicant has recently indicated they have up to 6,000 members. In their application, they say that only 300 visitors will attend large events. That's 5% of their membership. In their own application, they state, the project size and total square footage are designed to meet the minimum requirements of our religious community. If you approve PQP, we ask for reasonable permit conditions. Clarify that the maximum number will be 300 visitors, including staff and volunteers, and will not exceed 300 in total. That the operating hours be 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. and not exceed. Maribel, followed by caller 5194. Good evening, Maribel Montanez of Gardner Health Services. A simple reminder that land use is a term used to describe the human use of land. It represents the economic and cultural activities that are practiced at a given time by a given people in a place. The temple project describes the human use of this particular site by the Kamai Chrome community. The city of San Fernando has specific land use policies. And the facts here are that this project conforms to the Envision San Jose 2040 general plan, municipal code. It meets the design guidelines and other regulations. Importantly, the temple addresses housing by providing eight residents to months. Tonight, we look to the council's support. And once again, for the human use of this land by the Kamai community. Please approve the Planning Commission's recommendation. Thank you. Caller 5194, followed by Ed. Caller 5194. Please press star six to unmute. 
you unmuted for a second, then you remuted yourself. Okay, I'm going to move um, over to Ed and call her 5194. Hello, hello. Got you. Go ahead. Yeah, my name is Raimundo Espinosa. I'm the CEO of Gardner Health Services. We've been involved with the Cambodian community for more than 25 years. Um, we're in support of the proposed project. And really, I mean, to me, they're almost invisible because they, they seek no harm. They want peace. And our challenge is trying to get them to open up because they don't trust. And, and, and one of our strategies has been to work within uh, the community and the temples and to, to get them to participate in the healing that they need for their mental health in light of all the atrocities that they've experienced. So please, you know, in, in the name of equity and inclusion and participation, please, please approve this project. Ed, followed by Robert. Hello, thank you for in 50 seconds I have left. I live about 200 yards from this proposed temple. My question really is, given that we hear in the news every day about all the troubles with housing people, in California, why take this site off the market for eight residents when it could easily have six single family homes or even town homes where you could have 120 uh, residents there, I should think. I just don't understand the use of this property for this purpose. Thank you. Robert. Followed by Sovini. I'm Robert Reese, chair of the Land Use Committee of the DA Community Roundtable. I appreciate that some of the neighbors and Canyon Snow reached out to me early on to facilitate collaboration. My comments are my own. There are avenues of compromise available to you. Concerns can be balanced and risk averted for the community by limiting the number of large events until such time as there can be a check-in with a director or PC hearing to ensure the unique track circulation plan actually works for this discretionary use on this small, irregularly shaped site. The city told the prior property owner no more intense zone than R15 would be allowed. Initially, it was stated there would only be several large gatherings per year. Some 65 parking spaces were lost without the underground parking. The 25% reduction in size was mostly for the worship and mediation area with the emphasis on retaining the large gap. Sovini followed by Elber. Hi, my name is Sovani Tyke. I'm 22 years old. On my post-college graduation trip, I went to Cambodia for two months. It was the most life-changing experience I've had as I was exposed to Cambodian civilization. I finally stepped onto Khmer ancestral grounds. I could finally visualize the stories my family told me from when they were younger. My family calls me lucky because most of them have not gone back nor have visited Angkor Wat either. The difference between this construction of this new temple and the temple we are currently at is that in Cambodia and in Vietnam, there are pagodas built with beautiful Khmer architecture. The one we are at now is just a house. I never truly stepped onto a true, a real Khmer temple until I went to Cambodia. I want to share this, this experience with Khmer American youth and future generations what a real temple looks like. I don't want my future kids to be confused that temples are just ordinary houses. I want them to grow up knowing what their architecture looks like. And for those who cannot visit our home country due to lack of resources or because of PTSD from war and genocide, they should be able to... Albert? Albert. Okay, I'm gonna go to council. Okay, thank you, Tony. Thank you all for participating.
appreciate everybody who came out to uh, take the time this evening to express your opinion on the proposed temple. I want to also thank city staff for working with both neighbors and the applicant over the last couple of years here. So we've gone through this process. I, I thought we'd start by maybe clarifying a few things that came up during public comment that would just be good for us all to get on the same page about. So I'm gonna ask a few questions of staff and then maybe a few of the applicant. And then we'll open it up to discussion from the council. So for staff, I heard some mention of commercial use and I just wanna clarify, is the applicant seeking any commercial use permit or, or they outlined any commercial uses of the site? <laughs> No, the applicant is not, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> okay. And can you just confirm the height of the roof and how, how tall the roof on the building, the temple roof would be? Yes, there's been some statements that it's four stories. It's actually two stories. And the two stories is up to 35 feet. It's actually the spire that goes as high as 64 feet. Okay, so it's two stories at 30? 35. 35 feet, but there is the spire that goes, that goes correct, higher. Yeah. Okay. And then what is the limit on the size of the gatherings that can occur at the temple? Good evening, Mayor Mann. Um, the limit is 300 people maximum. Okay. And that doesn't include the eight residents. Okay, so 308 in theory. Okay. And the hours during which large events could take place? I think we're probably especially interested in the evening, how, how late an event might go. It's actually 7 to 10. 7 to 10. That's correct. So yeah. 10, 10 p.m. 10 p.m. is when events will have, correct, to, yeah. have to conclude. Okay. And then in, in your experience as compared with churches, temples, synagogues, other places of worship and residential neighborhoods in other parts of San Jose, how do the density and allowed uses of this site compare? So with regards to the land use, both R15 and PQP allow for uh, gatherings like this or religious gatherings uh, through SUP. So this is not out of the ordinary. And if the applicant fails to comply with any of the conditions that are outlined in the conditional use permit, what, what recourse do the neighbors or does the city have? It becomes a code issue. And then what? And if they are out of compliance, they could be penalized. Yeah. Okay, penalized how? There are steps to, that can be taken that, uh, that okay. our code enforcement will be the right Including entity. fees. Could control. be fees, could be could uh, go to court. suspension, could be anything. Yep. Okay. Sure. Okay. And then maybe I can ask the, if I could just ask the applicant a few questions as well, if you wouldn't mind coming on down. Thank you, Eric. Um, I know a big concern, thank you, Eric. I know a big concern for the neighborhood has to do with parking availability, and I understand there's a plan for overflow parking. Can you outline a little little more detail what the applicant has arranged? Mm -hmm. Well, first, first of all, um, the, the parking situation is ironic because we proposed a much larger underground parking garage and the neighbors didn't want it. <laughs> so we had to reduce the parking count because the neighbors didn't want it. That said, um, the site includes 67 parking spots, which is sufficient for the regular functions of, of the temple. Uh, on occasion, there will be peak usage when there's special celebrations, and we have an arrangement with the Islamic Center for an off-site parking where people can park and we can shuttle them over. That's the plan. Um, but I'll remind the council that in December, y'all re removed parking requirements from development in the city. So <laughs> the actual parking requirement is zero but we're providing 67 to make it function for ourselves and to be respectful of the neighbors. Yeah, and those larger gatherings that can be up to 300 yes. people, yes. you have a sense of how many times per year we're talking here. This, 
I heard some comments concerned that this was going to just be an event center where the site would yeah, be rented yeah. out for weddings every every week. Yeah. And I'm no, curious we're, we're, we're if you talk, could share a little more. We're talking like, you know, five to 12 times a year. That's what we're talking about. Uh, okay. The typical function of the temple, just so you understand the scale of this, during weekday worship, you might have a dozen to 15 people weekdays. On weekend worship, you may have about 50 people, as typical. And so that's the, act, the level of activity you're going to have most of the year. And then the handful to dozen times a year where there's something bigger, those are the, the events that we're talking about. And I'll just remind the city, you know, you don't, the council typically doesn't regulate what happens on Christmas celebrations at Christian churches. You don't regulate what happens at Rosh Hashanah at, at Jewish temples. You don't regulate what happens on Vesak Day at Vietnamese temples or Diwali at, at Hindu temples. The city's not in the practice of limiting and restricting religious celebrations at our places of worship. That said, there are numerous conditions in the permit, as well as the memo that the mayor and council members have issued. We accept all of those conditions to, um, to place guardrails <laughs> on the operation of our facility. And as staff has indicated, those are fully enforceable by the city. Code enforcement non-compliance is $2,500 fine per day for each day of non-compliance, all the way up to the city council has the authority to revoke the use permit and stop the operation if you choose. Thanks. That was actually the answer I was looking for earlier. Yeah. But uh, yeah, appreciate that. Um, and you anticipated one of the questions I had coming up, but just one more before I get to that one. Does the applicant have any intention of using the site as an event space to rent it out for revenue? No. Is that part of the plan? No. No. Okay. All, all events are associated with the function and operation of the temple itself. Right. Okay. Great. And then you, you already said this, but just to be clear, so there are 40 conditions outlined in the use permit plus a number of additional conditions in the group memo that was, that was authored. Uh, by a few colleagues and myself. Do, do, do you, does the applicant have any concerns with their ability to adhere to all of those stipulations? No, the applicant accepts all of those conditions. And let me, since it was raised during public comment about the existing temple, okay? First of all, the foundation does not own or operate the existing temple. They have no responsibility for the operation of that temple and any violations or problems over there. Um, but that existing temple speaks to the reason that a new temple is needed. It's not appropriate for people to have to, to try to worship in a converted 1,300 square foot residential house. It's totally inadequate. And so our facility is being designed to meet the needs of uh, a, a well-functioning place of worship with the sanctuary to worship in, the home for the, the monks, and the community hall for events as well as the grounds. And so it's a much better place, and not, and not to mention the parking, 67 parking spots. So we accept those conditions, and the fact that the foundation, which is a bona fide nonprofit, will provide a level of governance to the organization that doesn't exist in the other temple. So the nonprofit has a board of directors, and can be held accountable by the city as the applicant, owner, and operator of the new temple. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Okay. Yeah. Anything else? Okay. I think we're good for now. Thank you. So I've, I've had the opportunity to get to know the neighborhood a bit. I was out knocking on doors last year, heard a lot about the proposed project, and have since spent quite a bit of time with both concerned neighbors and, and the applicant. And I think you, you, know, you have two competing and valid values here. A community that wants a gathering place, a place of worship, a place of learning, a place to pass on traditions and, and culture, and neighbors who are understandably very concerned about what impact this might have on their quality of life in a, in a um, you know, pretty quiet and safe neighborhood. And I, I can appreciate those questions and concerns. What I've tried to do, and I, I want to, you know, thank Vice Mayor Kamei and Council Members Candelas, Foley, and Jimenez for 
joining uh, on, the, on the group memo that we authored is find a path that balances both of those needs. I would like to think that that desire to gather and have community and worship and pass on traditions can be compatible with a high quality of life in a residential area. And as has been pointed out, we have places of worship in neighborhoods across the city. I was just looking specifically in the surrounding area and we have conditions placed on the use of a number of other places of, of worship in the area. Grace Baptist Church has 16 conditions of approval. Most Holy Trinity Catholic Church has 19 conditions of approval. Luke Kwan Buddhist Center has 24. East Valley Pentecostal has 25. Holy Cross Romanian Orthodox has 28. Evergreen Islamic Center has 38. It seems the more recent they are, the more conditions they have. And then if passed, this temple would have over 40 conditions if the group memo is passed. So, um, you know, the goal here is to balance the neighborhood's desire for high quality of life, noise mitigation, traffic mitigation, with, uh, you know, the applicant's desire to create a beautiful space for community, for worship. So that's, that's the spirit of the memo. I, I, I don't think any compromise, any memo, any set of rules is going to be perfect. We're striving to, to find the best outcome for everyone here while balancing the many needs of our incredibly, beautifully diverse community. And we are very lucky to have a vibrant Cambodian community here in San Jose. So that's, that's really what's in the memo. The, the one thing in the memo that I would like to just kind of close on here with staff is that I, I do think this question of pedestrian safety and traffic calming is really important. And I think the neighbors are correct that while I'm a, I'm a believer in roundabouts, I've seen the research, <laughs> they, they work. I'm not sure it's sufficient in this case. And so I do just want to point in the group memo to recommendation 2E when it says direct city staff to explore appropriate traffic calming measures near the project to increase traffic safety. I just want to acknowledge that neighbors have, have asked us to really come back and think harder about the crosswalk at um, Cedardale and Ruby, for example, to think about having a flashing light crosswalk there. And I think that very well may be merited, especially as we see more intensive use of the area. So I just, I wanted to highlight there that I'm, I'm not sure that we've gone quite far enough on the traffic safety front. But I do think by and large, the 40 plus conditions, the group memo outlines a lot of mitigation and quite a bit of burden on the applicant and sets a very high bar while still enabling the community to have this gathering place. So I am, I am comfortable with where, assuming the memo moves forward, the, the compromise we've struck here, but want to acknowledge that it's not going to make everybody happy. And so it's, these are never easy decisions, but I appreciate everybody listening respectfully in the process that we've all been going through over more than a, a, year, a couple of years now together. So, staff, just want to confirm on 2E there, do, would, that t would you consider, does that take into account the ability to look at a, a protected crosswalk, or I'm sorry, a, a crosswalk with lights or other mitigations along those lines? Thank you for the question, Mayor. Uh, Jay Guevara, Deputy Director of Public Works. During the implementation stage, staff can review the viability and effectiveness of the flashing beacon. At a broader context, the memo does uh, specify that the uh, signalization warrant review did not warrant a signal in the roundabout with um, its impacts would improve safety for all users of the roadway. Yeah, thank you. I'd certainly like us to reconsider that. And, and I'll just note in, in the memo, I won't read the group memo out, but we also add some additional requirements, including removal of the designated smoking areas, Requirement to have an on-site co on-site coordinator, including for traffic impacts for all gatherings over 100 people, the restrictions on late-night usage, capping it at 10 p.m. as we mentioned, and the six-foot sound barrier along the adjacent properties. One final question, actually, I apologize, uh, Eric, for the for the applicant. Um, there was some mention of the single-family home, which I have to admit, when you look at the site, is a little awkward there. Can you give us the back, was, the, was there any attempt to purchase the property? Uh, yes, there was, and they did not want to participate. Was the offer at market rate or better? I don't know the answer to that question. Okay, but there was, there was an attempt made to purchase the property? Yes. Okay. All right, that's it. Thank you. Okay, 
to turn to my colleagues and we'll start with Councilmember Dewan. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, got a few questions for staff. On, on your report, and this gone back, back and forth about four years, correct? This, this, this whole process. Is that correct? That's correct. And my understanding that throughout that four years, you have reached out to the constituent surrounding the projects. And my understanding from your report that you had more support for building the project versus against. The, the process, I mean, the project has gone through a lot of metamorphosis, and at some points there's been uh, opposition, at some points too there's been uh, support, but staff has actually stuck to what the code requires and what the planning process is more than anything else. And, and part of the <clears throat> agreement is that they're not going to sublease out to, to wedding events or anything like that. Am I, am I correct on that? I believe that was agreed along the line. Okay. But staff was not privy to that, any of those details. Okay. And how did the staff look into mitigate the safety be beside the roundabout? And I know the mayor just mentioned the, the crosswalk would possible lights. Any other things that, that was able to help mitigate? Other safeties include uh, filling in any gaps in the sidewalk on the two different streets nearby in consideration of all users of the roadway, vehicles, pedestrians, and cyclists. Can I ask the um, applicants a few questions, please? So, how many community meetings over the last four years uh, have you guys? We had. Uh in the early stages, we, the project, conducted two community meetings early on to get early input from neighbors, and then the city itself conducted two additional community meetings through the process, including the EIR scoping meeting. But a bulk of our outreach has been more um, smaller groups, talking to individuals uh, and groups of people from organizations, uh, the D8 roundtable, that kind of outreach to, to get input. And we've changed the project based on the input that we got. Am I understanding earlier that the original plan offer underground parking? That's correct. And at that point, how many vehicle, vehicles can you park underneath? I'm not, I'll get that answer for you. I don't have it at the moment. But the underground parking garage was, I believe, 42,000 square feet. So it literally covered half of the site. Okay. And then your sound wall, how, how tall is that sound wall? Six feet, which is city standard. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, council member. I, I just do have a recommendation, you know, um, that, uh, no, I'll recant that, I'll move forward. Thank you, and I, I did appreciate your memo. Thank you for the blue memo today, council member. We'll go to council member Candelas next. Um, as, the, as the council member representing where this temple is actually being proposed, I, I appreciate the time the residents have spent making their voices heard and opinions heard uh, tonight, um, as well as over the last four years. You know, I live in this area. Not only do I ride my bike through Ruby, 
to go up to Alum Rock. I also drive through it as well. Uh, you know, I, I want to thank the I want to thank the staff for their hard work on this project. I know there's been a lot of work and time on this project in the last four years. Uh, being new to this role has provided me an opportunity to take an objective look on the issues raised. Over the last couple of months, I visited the site. I've also met with the neighbors and stakeholders, as well as many others that attended my community coffees and other events in the district to share both their concerns as well as support. I know there are strong feelings on both sides of this proposal, and those feelings are very important to take into account in our decision today. We must look at the rules and whether or not this development or any other development follows those rules. These rules, like the general plan and development guidelines, were not created by me or my colleagues. They were created by the citizens of San Jose, and that must govern the decisions that we make. And we as elected officials must make, or appointed officials, must make decisions based on those rules if we want our city to grow and thrive. If we do not, no one will invest in our city. The Watai Kamai Kombucha Krom Temple has followed those rules. They have earned staffs and the Planning Commission's recommendations. The project has more than 40 conditions of approval as mentioned by the mayor. And because the community reached out, we have additional ones in our memo. And at the request of the neighbors surrounding the project, for any event over 100 people on site, we're going to require the identification and presence of an on-site event compliance, traffic control, and security coordinator. When the parking lot is full and unable to accept additional vehicles, we're going to require the temple to communicate through signage the alternative parking options available to the guests. Um, you know, as the mayor pointed in his remarks, because of those traffic issues, uh, we are directing our city staff to, to explore appropriate traffic calming measures. Um, you know, possibly looking at things like speed radar signage or an additional stop sign between Tully and Norwood, for example. Uh, we're confirming no late night usage of the temple. The regular hours of operation shall be set at 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. Removing the designated outdoor smoking area, as, as, as the mayor mentioned, is, is part of the conditions that we're, 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 we're requiring. Um, as well as communicating construction plans and timelines for the neighbors within a 500 foot radius of the project. Um, you know, I did have a couple questions regarding to parking because residents were concerned, but those were obviously already addressed, um, so I'm not going to ask uh, a redundant question. Um, as a practicing Catholic, religious readings are important to me. Welcoming diversity in our, in our community and District 8 is important to me. I am blessed to be able to express my faith at Most Holy Trinity, which, <laughs> as we all heard, has 19 conditions of approval on it. I will say that on big holidays, there are more cars in the neighborhood. Yeah. Uh, Ash Wednesday just happened. There were a lot of cars in the neighborhood. But, you know, religious expression and religious freedom are among the founding principles of our country. It is critical that we welcome those variety of faith, traditions, and histories here into our great city. Our city and our community will be stronger and better for it. In addition to following all our city's rules and approving the temple, uh, approving the temple is the right thing to do. This is a community that has suffered tremendously over the past five decades in surviving a genocide and moving across the globe to make San Jose their home. They have voiced time and time again that this temple is central to their collective identity. It is time to do the right thing after four years of work, input, project changes, community discussions, and uh, give space for the community to worship and heal from the horrific trauma they've endured. Uh, for all those reasons, I move our memorandum I on this project that. application and respectfully ask my colleagues for their support. Go ahead and second now, Council Member Duan. I'll second. All right, thank you, Council Member. And Well said, and apologies for not coming to you first. I was on autopilot here on my screen, but well, well said. Um, Council Member Ortiz. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the city of San Jose enjoys diversity, multiple languages being spoken, cultures, and of course, cuisines. Uh, I'm you know, privileged to uh, represent a district that has multiple uh, religious denominations operating in our neighborhoods, whether it's Catholic, um, Seventh-day Adventist, Baptist, Buddhist, um, all of them are operating within neighborhood zones in harmony with uh, their neighbors and, and local residents. 
Um, and I'm specifically honored to have two Cambodian Buddhist pagodas in uh, District 5. Uh, the Wat Khmer Kram Buddhist Temple is currently located on Sunset Avenue in my district uh, in the Mayfair neighborhood. Uh, and the property, uh, unfortunately, is proving to be too small given the popularity of the Sangha's Dharma practice and disciplines. Uh, I had the honor of visiting uh, the current temple last weekend uh, where I witnessed a beautiful community celebration and even uh, joined membership uh, in meditation. Um, the, the Buddhists, uh, although I regret, regret to see the Wat Khmer Kram Buddhist temple leaving my district, I'm thrilled to know that the Cambodian Buddhist community will gain a finer and well-planned uh, new facility. The Buddhist practice, like other religions, is about bringing peace, harmony, uh, love, kindness, and a healthy environment to their families and community. And I'm confident that this new temple will add value to the surrounding neighborhood and create a sense of safety and harmony uh, to the area like it has helped uplift our Mayfair community. You know, so I'm proud to stand in strong support of uh, the Wat Khmer Krum Buddhist Temple. Um, and just to um, uh, uh, clarify, I do feel like um, my morality was, was um, uh, questioned. I never received a donation from the consultant, never received a donation from the planner or the Buddhist organization. I'm doing this, I'm supporting this because it's the right thing to do. And it's the right thing for the community. Uh, and, and so I'm excited. I'm excited for the new project and I look forward to uh, attending the ribbon cutting in my colleague's district. Thank you. Thank you, council member. I'll do you one better. The applicant supported my opponent, but that's oh. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, just a moment of levity. All right, council member Foley. Oh, okay. sorry, I missed, I missed it with all the celebration. I am so touched by all of the people who have come to speak today, those in favor of the temple, and truly the neighbors as well. I know as, as a council member, Council Member Candelas, Candelas, welcome to the world of being a city council member where you have to balance the needs and concerns of the neighbors and the residents with the desires and the greater issue of bringing this fabulous temple into the community. I'm really have, I'm proud to have co-authored the memo with you and the mayor and others and uh, appreciate the opportunity to have worked with it on you, work with you on it. This is, when I listen to all of you speak and I listen to the neighbors as much as I listen to those in favor of the temple, I did come here in favor of the temple and I will be for voting in favor of the temple. But it's truly because I really believe in the goals and desires and needs for this temple. This is a spiritual organization. It's a place for people to come together to practice your meditation, mindfulness, which, by the way, I try to practice every day. Sometimes it's easier than others, but I do practice mindfulness and meditation every morning. It helps center me. I try to practice, Some one of you uh, said loving kindness, compassion, spiritual well-being. I try to practice that as well. I truly look forward to attending your temple once it's built and created. The, the drawings that we have seen are absolutely beautiful. It's a place of harmony, it's a place of tranquility, it's a place of peace. And I believe that the residents, want, the neighbors, once they see it in action and see how beautiful it is, that they too will feel that beauty and that peace and that harmony that comes from this temple. So I stand together with my other council colleagues and I stand together with you in support of the temple. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, council member. We'll go to council member Batra. Good evening. 
Thank you very much for all your comments, whether they were for the temple or whether they were against the temple. Thank you for answering all the questions which my colleagues asked and clarified your position and any of the misinformation which people may have picked up or created it. I too believe that a temple, whether it's a Sikh temple or whether it's a Hindu temple or whether it's a Cambodian temple, I think they add something to the community where community lives more in harmony, okay? Whether they come to that particular temple or they go to their own temple, it is, it is a place of worship always brings communities together. The concerns which have been indicated by, I received some calls. Nobody was really opposed to it. The people who called me from that district, they were asking me to get some accommodations done, which you have done, you have had your meetings with the community. I would say that I'm happy to support this project with one request to be added into the memo with the 500 others you have put in there. And that request is that this applicant and its people have gone and worked with the community in multiple meetings, sought their input, compromised on those. And I would suggest that we add the applicants to continue good faith communication and negotiations for any possible accommodations desired by the community. We are not asking that they sh must compromise everything, but what we are saying is that they should continue to listen to them, interact with them, accommodate what they can possibly can, and, and that's my request for the um, addition to your memo. So thank you, Council Member. If I could just offer a couple of thoughts on that. What, one is uh, we do have in the group memo a requirement of consistent communication with everyone within 500 feet of the proposed temple. So there's a requirement baked in there that I know the applicant has, has affirmed they're very happy to adhere to of consistent communication with everybody in the vicinity. In terms of additional changes to the project, there has to be a point. This process has been going for so long that I don't think we can oblige them to further accommodations, but I do think there are some items that now move into our realm, particularly around traffic safety. As staff assesses additional improvements in the area that we might want to make, there may be further mitigation, particularly around things like traffic safety that we choose to prioritize as a council, but I, I wouldn't want to put any additional obligation on the applicant at this point. This doesn't obligate them to accommodate anything. This only says that they need to continue to have their communication and negotiation with them. It does okay. not obligate them to do any additional changes to their project. Okay, and I, I read that as being captured in the, in the group memo already. But I appreciate, I, I, I appreciate I the point. I, I disagree with that, Mayor, but that's okay. You're All welcome right. to make the motion if, if you'd like to be really specific about what you're recommending. You, do you want to move in a, a friendly, or you want to offer a friendly uh, amendment? Yeah, we'll I, I'm just offering a friendly amendment. The applicant to continue good faith communications, negotiations for any possible accommodation desired by the community. Council Member Candelas. It, 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 it is my understanding that we're already doing that, but if, if that'll make you feel better, uh, Council Member Batra, it's it, fine. It, yeah. it will make me feel better that I will be able to say to the community what they requested me is in there and we are supporting the project. I've already said that I'm supporting the project. I think it will make a little bit happier the community members the, who approach us. Okay. Okay, that is a, our sentiment. This is not a legally enforceable no, requirement. No, it is not. Okay, just yes. want to clarify. And the seconder? I'll second. I'm sorry, are you, you're the seconder on the motion. Oh, I heard Councilmember Condellas is okay with that. I just want, okay. Right. Councilmember Dwan, okay. you're all right with so, that? So Absolutely. I close it with the, okay. that I heavily <clears throat> endorse the project to move forward and have the temple, and I'll be there to visit it when it is inaugurated. Okay, thank you. All right, let's keep moving here. We have a few more items on the agenda. Council Member Torres. Thank you, uh, and thank you to, to staff uh, for all your hard work. 
years of hard work, uh, and especially thank you to our, our Cambod Cambod Cambodian community here today. Uh, you, are, you have been resilient, uh, and you, you definitely deserve your, your beautiful temple. Uh, I grew up in the Washington community, and I grew up around the Sacred Heart, community, uh, Sacred Heart Catholic Church. It was actually also a place where I worshiped, especially at midnight uh, or on the streets during Easter uh, celebrations. So for you all to have a place of worship is, is extremely important. But most importantly, without me going to Sacred Heart uh, Catholic Church, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have learned the traditions and the culture of my community. And that's, that's, uh, that's important. Now I live in Japantown, directly across the street from a Ethiopian church, a Methodist church, and a Buddhist temple. So on the weekends, there's usually never any parking, but that's okay because this is what I see. I see folks connected to culture, to culture and traditions every single weekend and every single day. And that's why I too will be supporting this project today Thank you. <laughs> Everyone else got a clap. <laughs> uh, but that's why I will be supporting this project today, because it is very important to continue to celebrate our culturals and traditions um, here in the city of San Jose. So thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Council Member. Vice Mayor Kamei. Thank you. I'll be brief because much has been already said by my colleagues. Um, I just want to say that um, the applicant has gone above and beyond uh, in terms of looking at all of the conditions of approval. It's all in the memo, so I won't go through them. But I just want to say how delighted I am to be able to uh, be part of and uh, approve a place of belonging uh, for your community. I think it's the right thing to do. Great. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Tony, we're ready to vote. Torres? Uh, aye. Cohen? Thank you. I'm sorry. Can I make a comment? Oh, I'm sorry, Council Member. <laughs> <laughs> Please, go ahead. Um, yeah, hi. I, I wasn't going to speak up, but I do want to, first, I just want to thank everyone um, involved in the project and the neighbors for their engagement throughout, because I think the project has gotten better as a result. Um, I do, I do want to just ask a question about the friendly amendment that was accepted from, from council member Batra. I want to be clear about what that's saying. It does, it, it seems to imply that there will be ongoing continued communication to make, um, to, to listen to other suggestions. And I think the project needs to move forward at this point. And I, I just, I just think it's important for us to be, um, clear and straightforward and, and, well thought, uh, have well thought out language in the the um, in the policies that we pass. And while I know that we want, you know, we want to continue good neighbor engagement and good relationships between the temple and the neighborhood, I think you know we do that by saying that from the dais. We do that by adding it to the commentary in a memo. But I'm not sure that we necessarily do that by adding language that seems that implies that there's some additional obligation going forward. So I just want to understand the language of what's in that amendment before, you know, we approve it because it it, it sounds like it's it's not necessarily a, a statement of substance. And I want to be sure that that when we that we have substantive, um, valuable language in our final adopted policies yeah it's a, it's a fair so point can you maybe, just clarify maybe, what it is i share the mean? same yeah as i as i expressed previously i share the same concern maybe i can ask councilman condellis if he can just recount what he understands the friendly amendment to be uh, a good faith effort to communicate with the residents through construction which is what we have in the memorandum yeah so as long as it's through construction about the construction process which is in the memo already i'm okay but I just wanted to be careful that the language that's being suggested is not implying that there will be additional conversation about further changes to the design or other things that have already gone been gone back and forth between the applicant and the neighborhood and, and city planning staff. 
No, th thank you, Councilmember Cohen. That's a good, from the way I understood it and the way it was communicated, it was what we encapsulated in, in, in item number seven of our memorandum. And so that's why it says, the applicant is required to communicate construction plans and timelines to the neighbors within a 500 foot radius with three subconditions, A, B, C. That to me, adding a good faith effort to communicate construction plans, that's, that's what I understood it. Yeah, so I, so while I don't know what the next step is here, except to say that I, I don't necessarily support the, the part, the friendly amendment portion of the uh, motion, um, because I, I don't think it changed it. I think it goes beyond what you intended in your original proposal. And I want to be sure that when we, we pass clear and meaningful statements uh, in the things that we, we approve. So you can take it from here, but that's my input. Can I comment? Uh, Go ahead, Councilmember Bottrell, maybe you could try to clarify one more time specifically okay. what it is that you want to add to the direction here. We, we're, either, we're either putting a condition on the applicant or we're directing staff to do something. So what, oh, what is it you would like to do? This is the condition. This is not on the staff to do anything additional because you already gave the staff the direction. I think uh, Councilmember Candelas summarized it pretty well on there that it's the communication with the applicant to communicate with the uh, community. And, and, and we already s specified that we are not doing the obligation on them to make any changes to the design. So you already said that, I said it, and, and uh, Council Member Candelas said it, okay? Uh, to, uh, look, I, I think, Council, uh, uh, Council Member Batra, I appreciate the effort and the concern. I, I, I'm, I, I think we are, we are drowning in a cup of water here. Um, and so I think it's, we, we captured that clearly. The mayor, vice mayor, uh, in our bullet, number seven, to, to, to in, impose the condition required to communicate construction. So I, all, in all fairness, um, you know, I, 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 if it'll make the council feel better, we'll, we'll just move the memorandum as is um, and 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 I, I will reject the 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 friendly amendment made by Councilmember Bacha, so we can just move the memorandum as is, because a lot of time, effort, uh, and and staff uh, consideration went into our own staff's consideration went into that. So that being said, um, um, I, I I appreciate the effort, Councilmember Bacha, and and your willingness to to jump in. But I, I think we put a really really good uh, memo together um, with, with staff and, and amongst amongst us. So. Great. Thank you, Councilmember. Councilmember Dwan, are you happy with the motion as it is? No, I, um, I actually was um, just asking for a little bit more time to speak uh, briefly. Go, go ahead. Well, thank you, Mayor, Council, City staff, volunteers, and those who spent countless hours to make this project a reality. As an immigrant, I came here in 1975. And I realize that America is the greatest country on this earth where religion, free, religion freedom is an American right held highest regard and our city council has the opportunity to provide Buddhist residents in our city with a new place to exercise their rights and practice their faith. The Wat Khmer Kapucha Krom Temple is a sound project has been designed with input received from vigorous community outreach. And I stand with my colleagues to support the temple. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, council member. And council member, I just wanna clarify, you are good with the motion as it stands, which is the group memo without the friendly amendment. I'm good with it, thank okay. you. Okay, thank you. Okay, once again, I want to thank the applicant, everybody who came out to speak today. I want to also thank the neighbors, who many of whom may not be happy with the outcome this evening, but I do think their engagement has helped shape the project and will improve things like traffic safety and make the neighborhood better in the long run. So I want to thank everybody who participated. Thank you, Councilmember Condellas, for digging in as a new council member and weighing the pros and cons and engaging with the community to help us get to a great group memo. Thank you for the motion. And Tony, we are ready to vote. Torres? Yes, again. <laughs> Cohen? 
Cohen? Aye. Ortiz? Aye. Davis? Yes. Doan? Aye. Candelas? Aye. Foley? Aye. Batra? Aye. Kame? Aye. Mahan? Aye. Thank you. Congratulations. All right, thank you. We still have items on the agenda, so I would, I would just ask everybody to leave quietly and then celebrate and then drive safely home. Thank you, have a great evening. Okay, thank you, good night. <laughs> All right, we are... Excuse me, can everybody hold it down? We're still, we still have a meeting. I'm sorry, we, we still have some items before us. We still have to work, I'm so sorry. Have a great evening, but please keep the noise down. <laughs> Too bad those people left, they would have had evidence. Okay, we are on to item, sorry, I've lost my agenda here. 10.2. We are on to item 10.2. Do we have a staff presentation? Yes, we do. Okay, let's jump into it. Good evening again, Mayor and Council we Members. Do. Robert Manford, Deputy Director for Planning. Uh, with me, uh, Jay Guevara, Deputy Director for Public Works. David Keon, Principal Planner for the City's uh, Secret Team. Robert, I'm sorry for one moment. Excuse me, everyone. I'm so, I, I appreciate the enthusiasm. I just, I hope you have a great evening, but we're gonna need all conversation to happen outside of the chamber. We still have more items we're reviewing tonight. I'm sorry, thank you. Have a great evening, drive safely. <laughs> if we could just keep the noise down, thank you. Okay, thank you, good night. All right, Robert. Okay, great. Thank you. Let's and then a peek the city's historic preservation officer. The item before you today is the annexation of what is commonly known as Burbank 44. Uh, it's an annexation of five parcels totaling approximately 0 0.895 acres to the city. As you can see, the site is located on the north side of Western Carlos between Brooklyn Avenue and Boston Avenue. The general plan land use designation is mixed use commercial and is within the Western Carlos Urban Village Plan area. The proposed zoning district is the same mixed use commercial and the city council pre-zoned the site on February 28. The annexation went through review uh, entailing internal coordination between PBCE, Public Works, ESD, DOT, Building and Fire, and also with the City Attorney's Office. With regards to external coordination, we coordinated with the county, LAFCO. Uh, specifically, the annexation boundary has been certified by the county surveyor. We also coordinated with the special districts. The site will detach from all appropriate districts, including Burbank Sanitary District, District to keep the services consistent to avoid, and also to avoid duplication of services. Uh, with regards to CEQA, a determination of consistency with the 1888 Western Carlos Project Environmental Impact Report, which was certified by City Council, is what was prepared. The next step in the annexation process will be for the planning commission to consider two development permits, which are associated with this and are currently on file. These are CP20-020. It's a conditional use permit to allow the demolition of all the existing buildings for a mixed use development, including 61 multifamily residential units, 6,000 square feet of ground floor commercial space, and a 246 bed 125,262 square foot residential care facility on a 1.25 gross acre site. We also have a tentative map, file number T20016. These two applications have been reviewed by Public Works, ESD, DOT, Building and Fire. Staff is recommending 
that the City Council adopt a resolution ordering the annexation of territory designated as Burbank Number 44, which involves the annexation to the City of San Jose of approximately 0.895 gross acre, acres of land located on the northeast corner of West San Carlos Street and Brooklyn Avenue, and the detachment of same from the appropriate special districts as previously mentioned. With that, we are available for any questions. Great, thank you. Let's go to public comment. Sal Caruso. Thank you, Honorable Mayor and Council Members. Uh, I'm the project architect here to answer any questions. It's been a long night. I will refrain from any presentation and please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you so much. We're Thank in full support of staff's recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, so. Mike, followed by Valerie. Yeah, this is Mike Sauter with uh, Preservation Action Council, San Jose. Um, we agree with staff's recommendation relative to the annexation of the territory designated as Burbank 44. Um, we do have concerns with the city's determination and consistency with the EIR of the 1881 West Carlos project, San Carlos project. City asserts that the proposed mixed use project, um, which is located within San Jose's urban growth boundary is consistent with Envision 2040 general plan um, goals and policies, as well as San Carlos urban village plan. Uh, but we see a disconnect with what's actually being proposed. The project will demolish three street facing historic buildings known to the community as Antiques Row. These historic buildings are in fact featured on the cover of and within the West Kent San Carlos Village Plan as examples of existing historic structures that should be retained. Thank you. Valerie? Valerie Armento, Council for the Burbank Sanitary District. Last week, each member of the City Council was sent a letter by the District Board President about this item. It's in your packet. As the letter details, we are very concerned that the annexation was presented to both the Planning Commission and to you previously with a recommendation not to detach, yet now the subject of sanitary sewers is not being discussed at either prior hearing, but the staff has changed its recommendation. Misleading a governmental entity and then changing the recommendation abruptly is not appropriate and possibly illegal. Council needs to direct the staff to work with, not against special districts and to communicate with them forthrightly. Burbank Sanitary District must be engaged when an annexation is proposed, provided complete and accurate information and have its concerns considered seriously, not dismissively. We should be proactively provided with copies of the reports. We're a governmental Back to council. Thank you, Tony. Move oh. approval. Okay, and we have a motion from Councilmember Foley, second from Councilmember Davis, and we'll go to Councilmember Ortiz. Thank you so much, Mayor. Um, thank you, PBCE staff, for working so hard on these items. Uh, similar to my talking points when this annexation, annexation came beforehand, I'm, I'm not opposing the project, uh, support development. But I, I do would, would like to say a few comments in regards to the importance of historical preservation here in the uh, city of San Jose. And you know, I'm, I continue to be saddened to see development pit against you know, the preservation of character and heritage of our neighborhoods. Uh, many of our urban villages struggle to meet growth expectations uh, that were set in their planning. You know, there's plenty of evidence that a strong neighborhood identity and legacy businesses that actually serve the nearby community can be what attracts residents and investments that set up an urban village for uh, overall success. And I feel that the string of, I fear that the string of annexations and development in this area uh, could be undercutting the neighborhood heritage um, and overall identity of the West San Carlos uh, uh, area. The, the city only currently has uh, one tool for placekeeping at the moment, which is historic preservation. And while I appreciate the work our historic commission uh, and historic pres preservation officer um, are doing, it's clear that they are both uh, overburdened and the, the policy uh, they have um, are not meeting the needs of the overall task. Um, I, I believe we need an overall adaptive reuse policy 
among other interventions to ensure that we're not bulldozing what makes our communities great um, in order to build in them. Um, um, for that important work, you know, that's why I've included uh, in one of my budget asks um, another uh, historic preservation officer and adequate staffing for the implementation of adaptive, uh, an adaptive reuse ordinance. Um, with that in mind, I do have a question for the uh, developer or an architect uh, on this project. Um, you previously stated last time uh, that you were here uh, that you were willing to help specifically the antique shops and tenants with possible relocations. I wanted to hear what, what sort of commitment you're, you're willing to provide for a relocation. So f first of all, I am the project architect only, not the developer, oh, so okay, just okay. for clarification. But I have spoken to the owners about it to clarify mm -hmm. your point in anticipation. Yeah. Uh, the, there's several measures that will be taken. One, 100% uh, of the deposits will be returned to all tenants, regardless of condition, time spent, et cetera. Secondly, during the entirety of the entitlement process, which now is a few years, uh, there was a freeze on all rents, period, uh, during that process. Yeah. Thirdly, uh, they would be given 90 days written notice for when the project will be complete and they're being kept abreast every step of the way. And fourth point is that they can give 90 days written notice leaving the space without any penalty whatsoever or obligation on their lease. They would be freed of their lease and be able to leave without any penalties whatsoever. Uh, those are the, the points that were made with the, uh, by the owner. Okay, so there, there's not any specific support in regards to relocation, I guess. Uh, there is actually uh, a payment for their move within oh, San Jose. Yes, okay. also. Well, thank you. You're I appreciate welcome. that. Yes. And that's all my, my comments. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Council Member. Tony, we're ready to vote. Torres? Cohen? Aye. Ortiz? Aye. Davis? Yes. Joan? Aye. Candelas? Aye. Foley? Aye. Patra? Aye. Kame? Aye. Mahan? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're on to item 10.3, special use permit, historic preservation permit for property located at 19 North 2nd. We have a short presentation. Good evening again, Mayor and Council Members. Robert Manford, Deputy Director for Planning. And with me are Jay Gubera, David Keon, and Dana Peak. <laughs> so the item before you is the 19 North 2nd Street Mixed Use Project. The project components entail a special use permit to allow the removal of the majority of the roof and interior except for stairway core of an existing 15,000 square foot two-story building and retention and integration of the building walls, street facing facade, and a portion of the existing roof. Construction of a 22-story, 240 foot high, mixed use 100% affordable senior housing project with 220 multi-family residential units and approximately 18,643 square feet of commercial space with an up to four commercial condominiums on an approximately 0.22 gross acre site. The project also includes a historic preservation permit to allow the removal of the majority of the roof and interior, except for stairway core of a city landmark and the construction of a 22 story, 240 foot hill high building within the walls of the city landmark that will integrate and restore the street facing facade and a portion of the existing roof on an approximately 0.22 gross acre site. The general plan, the land use designation for the site is downtown, and the zoning district is DC, which is downtown primary commercial. The project review entailed conformance analysis with the Envision San Jose 2040 general plan, the city's municipal code, state density bonus law, downtown design guidelines and standards, and the city council policy 6-30, which is for public out outreach, in addition to the California Environmental Quality Act, CEQA. With regards to environmental review, a virtual joint EIR scoping and community meeting was held on August 9, 2021. A draft supplemental EIR 
to the Downtown Strategy 2040 final EIR was prepared. Drafts, the draft EIR circulated for 45 days from August 29, 2022 to October 13, 2022. There were less than significant impacts with regards to air, co air quality, cultural resources, hazards and hazardous materials, land use and planning, noise and vibration, in addition to tribal cultural resources. However, there were significant unavoidable impacts identified in terms of cultural resources and land use and planning. If the city were to approve the project as proposed, it would need to adopt a statement of overriding considerations because of the significant unavoidable impacts to cultural resources and land use. Five public comments on the draft EIR was received, were received during the public circulation period. Their comments included concerns related to cultural resources, non-compliance with the Secretary of Interior standards, and the, res and the resulting significant impact to a historic resource and the CEQA, non-compliance with the general plan policies related to preservation of historic resources and the historic preservation ordinance, and cumulative impacts to hi historic resources due to concurrent construction of downtown projects, including the VTA Bad Phase II project. The first amendment to the draft supplemental EIR, which includes responses to comments, was posted to the city's environmental review documents website on February 10. No further analysis or recirculation of the supplemental EIR is necessary at this point. So there are two recommendations. The first is for the special use permit. Staff recommends that the city council take the following actions. Adapt a resolution certifying the EIR prepared for the project and making certain findings concerning significant impact mitigation measures, alternatives, and adapting a statement of overriding consideration and a related mitigation monitoring and reporting plan in accordance with CEQA, and adopt a resolution approving subject conditions, a special use permit to allow the removal of the majority of the roof and interior except for the stair stairway core of an existing 15,000 square foot, two-story building, the retention and in integration of the building walls, street-facing facade and a portion of the existing roof, and the construction of a 22-story, 240 Fort High makes use 100% affordable senior housing project with 220 multi-family residential units and approximately 18,643 square feet of commercial space with up to four commercial condominiums on an approximately 0.22 gross acre site. The second recommendation has to do with the historic preservation permit and this slide actually provides the antecedent conditions leading to that. There were different recommendations from staff and the Historic Landmark Commission. Both are evidence-based expert recommendations. The HLC concluded that there is insufficient documentation for them to recommend approval of the hardship and a hardship request and commented that financial hardship analysis is not the HLC's expertise. The Historic Preservation Ordinance requires the HLC to make a recommendation within 60 days so the project was not moved forward to avoid, so the project was moved forward to, to avoid delays since the HLC deferred the action in December 2022. HLC noted that construction of a 22-story building behind the historic facade would significantly change the city landmark, but the recommendation of approval would allow for more meaningful input by the HLC. Historic Resources Consultant Technical Report and Staff Analysis concluded the project is inconsistent with the Secretary of Interior Standards for rehabilitation. It only conforms with three of the eight applicable standards, which does not allow for approval of the HP permit under section 13.48.240 of the HP ordinance, which is a hardship. The hardship provision of the HP ordinance does not provide any specifics on what evidence is required to provide hardship. The provision is broad and subject to interpretation. So staff recommendation to the council is as follows. Adopt a resolution approving subject to conditions a historic preservation permit to allow the removal of the majority of the roof and interior except for stairway core of a city landmark and the construction of a 22-story, 240-foot high building within the walls of the city landmark that will integrate and restore the street-facing facade and a portion of the existing roof of an approximately 0.22 gross acre site. 
This recommendation is a hybrid approach that would allow for the preservation of the most significant exterior and interior character defining features of the historic building. Condition number two, which is actually from the HLC of the HP permit resolution, incorporates the recommendation of the HLC to require the retention of the realty building sign above the central entry fenestration doors, existing windows, vestibule, vaulted ceilings, and bass relief, and 18 to 11 foot setback of the new construction from the original building as well as a retention of the front facade, the exterior walls, and a portion of the interior core, including the central entry vestibule and corridor on the first floor, the stairs and the second floor central lobby. This concludes staff report, and we are available for questions. The applicant is available online. His name is Kurt Anderson. Okay, great. Thank you, Robert. Do we have public comment? Alex, followed by Mike. Hey, Council, this is Mayor, Alex. The applicant needs to go first, please. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you said the applicant was available for questions. Does the applicant wish to give a, their five-minute statement? I, I believe so. And okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Let's go to the applicant next. Yeah, he's on panelist. Mr. Mayor, can you hear me? Yes, we've got you. Apologies. Go ahead. Okay. That's okay. Um, Mr. Mayor, members of the commission, my name is Kurt Anderson. I'm principal of Anderson Architects. I apologize for not being there. I just had a knee surgery last week, so it's a little tough to get around. So, uh, so next time I'll be there for sure. But before we proceed, I'd really like to uh, share with the council the, the amazing staff that you all have got. The, this has been a lengthy process. Uh, Dana Peak, Alec Antanza, Laura Miners, uh, Myra Blanco, Robert, and the staff has been so supportive and so um, encouraging and also made some great suggestions on this project until we get to bring more out today. So, you know, we've reviewed all the conditions. We're comfortable with them. Um, the one thing uh, I'm going to let you guys ask me a question, I'll respond because it's been a long night, as, as my good buddy Sal said. So why don't we just proceed with any questions then I can come back and I'll do a little wrap. I'd like to talk a little more about actually how much of that building we're saving because um, we we created a, an exhibit for Dana uh, last month because we actually took HLC through the, the uh, building so they can really see how much we're saving because we're saving a lot more of that building, it sounds like. We're saving the perimeter walls, uh, both floors. We're saving the, the whole floor system through the building. We're saving the front. We're saving... Um, uh, most of the third of the building on the, on the second floor. Uh, there's a lot of things we're doing, I think is important. And, and we're, like, like I said, we read those conditions from HLC and, and uh, we think they're very good and we're, and we're happy with those. So Mr. Mayor, if you want, I, I'll just wait. We can do that at the end. So um, in deference to the fact that it's getting late, um, however you'd like to proceed. Great. Well, we, we appreciate that. And thank you for joining us online uh, and appreciate your efforts to preserve the building. I'm sure colleagues may have questions on that point. Why don't we hear from other members of the public and then we'll come back around to council deliberation. Thank you, Mr. Bear. Thank you. Alex, followed by Mike. Hey, this is Alex Shore with Catalyze Silicon Valley. We had a chance, our members, to score this project, and we scored it a 4.1 out of 5, giving it really high scores on the intensity zoning, i.e. the number of homes being provided, the affordability, i.e. 100% housing that is affordable for seniors, and on legacy, hoping that the developer can continue to work with Historic Landmarks Commission and others to preserve as much of the existing building as possible such an asset to have 100% affordable housing at 22 stories exclusively for seniors. We also understand from the applicant that they're interested in providing health services in the commercial uh, part of the development. You might want to ask them about that today. I, I didn't see it in the staff report, but it is in our scorecard, uh, which you can check out at CatalyzeSiliconValley.org. All the projects we score are on that website. Thank you. Mike? Mike Sodergren, PAC San Jose. Uh, we're at a loss as to what to recommend for this project as it proposes to demolish a truly beautiful city landmark. 
that could be kept intact as a distinctive historic destination. It's hard to argue again against uh, prov the provision of affordable senior housing, but it's also hard to accept when you look at this project that it can actually be built without destroying a city landmark. It's hard for tax architects to see how the proposed building can actually function. There's no street facing plan for how trash will be stored and picked up. There's no identified drop off and pick up of parcels and people. It's unclear how emergency vehicles such as ambulances and fire station paramedics are gonna be able to access the building without shutting down Second Street. Um, so uh, we have lots of questions of functionality, but you know we like the concept. Um, we also have a big, big hard time with the financial hardship application. It seems like a self-inflicted wound. Thank you. Back to council. Thank you, Tony. Go to Councilor Torres. Hi, uh, good evening. Uh, I actually do have two questions, one for, for staff and one for the developer. Uh, the question, that's my phone, sorry. <laughs> Councilmember Um Just uh, real quick to our, to our staff, and by the way, major kudos to our planning department. Uh, I know that this is a very uh, delicate building and delicate situation, so major, major kudos to you for balancing the 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 needs of of our community, but also preserving a historical uh, structure. Uh, so one of the first questions I have is, um, why has there not been any discussions between the owner and the tenants where the building is going to be coming in, or the development oh. re redeveloped? Mayor, shall I answer that question? Was that directed to, to the applicant? Well, that was for, for the staff, but if the developer wants to answer oh, okay. that, I'm, I'm okay with that. Okay, thanks, Councilman. Um, I am, uh, yeah, granted, the whole financial thing, I'm, just like Sal said, I'm the architect, I'm not the developer, but I am aware that the owner has had uh, lengthy discussions with the tenant and, and assisted with the relocation, and then given them right, first right refusal to come back. That's, the all, that's all I know at this point in time, but I'm uh, convinced that that will, that will occur. And, uh, and I think that's really the way when we do this kind of projects, what we need to do, we got to these, give these people, help them and then get them back in because they are important for the downtown community. Great. Uh, my next question, uh, I should have had a follow up is, um, will there be any type of relocation assistance uh, for the two shops that are underneath this building? Now, so as far as I'm, uh, as I'm aware, they're at the loose for all the tenants, not just, uh, you know, the uh, Mexican restaurant, but all the tenants in the building. I, I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't hear that. I, as far as all the tenants in the building. I, I still didn't hear that. I'm sorry. That, is it me? I, it's, coming, it's cutting off. So. No, I, you know what? Here, let me, let me turn my mic up a little bit. My voice gets kind of scratched this time of night, if you know what I mean. Um, as far as I'm aware, that goes for all the tenants on the first floor. Okay. There are no tenants on the second floor. Okay. So there will be a relocation fees. There was, yeah. you organized system with the relocation. That's correct. Okay. Perfect. So again, this, this project, I'm glad to hear that this project is, is very important. We all know that we, we are having trouble with our, with our East Santa Clara street. It is right in front of the U building, which has been, which has sat vacant for 30, 40 years. Uh, and so, Again, a major, major thank you to our planning department for, uh, for working with all stakeholders to make this happen. So uh, with that, I motion for approval for item 10.3. Uh, Zachary, do we have a second? Sorry, go ahead. Councilmember Candelas seconding. Thank you, council member. Council member, sorry, Vice Mayor. Oh, council member Ortiz. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, similar uh, talking points to uh, Council Member Torres, but first I want to thank Robert and his team for helping my staff with some of the questions we had offline regarding uh, the facade uh, in, in, in the building. Um, I, I do have a, a question for, I guess it's very similar to uh, Council Member Torres's, but I do have a question uh, for Kurt Anderson, who is the architect. Uh, first off, uh, thank you so much for being innovative uh, on how you would like to support these businesses. I think I mentioned a few council meetings ago the potential of a right of first refusal for uh, small businesses when 
you know, they are potentially displaced. So I really appreciate that, that concept coming into um, uh, the, the conversation. Um, I did just want to flag, though, I did, I did go to Angelou's last week, and they mentioned that the business owner never reached out to them. The way they found out was through a letter from the city or, or some sort of letter in the mail. So uh, there has been a lack of communication there, which I know is not your fault. You're the architect. Um, but I don't know, if, you know, maybe the business owner reached out to them yesterday or, or the end of last week. So I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. But definitely hope that, um, you know, especially our immigrant businesses, who may be, you know, who may not have insight to our city processes and and uh, planning, you know, a letter in the uh, uh, being received saying, "Hey, your building is being developed and you're going to be displaced," could be quite concerning. Um, I'm sure uh, you could sympathize, but um, I'm, I'm happy to hear that there was communication with them. It's my understanding that they may find another place to go, but I appreciate the offer of the right of first refusal. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, council member, vice mayor Khmer. Thank you. So it wasn't clear to me uh, that the architect could commit to relocation or, you know, other assistance. Uh, is that is that something that you're authorized to 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 agree to? Um. Vice Mayor, that is, that's, you know, that's not my, uh, part of my responsibilities or nor my expertise. I mean, now you're getting into whole commercial real estate. I'm not a licensed real estate broker or agent. So we, I mean, we can help uh, help the tenant and maybe find a spot that might work for them from a design standpoint. But from the whole finance, I mean, that's just, uh, that's a huge liability for for us that that, have, that we have no expertise at, and, and not a license to do that kind of work. No, I, so I, under I understand that. Right. But Council Members Torres's question was whether there's going to be relocation assistance to the tenants that are there. And we understand that there are no tenants on the second floor, but there are tenants on the fl first floor. So that, uh, so the question to me was, uh, is there going to be relocation assistance to the current tenants that are there? And that is yes or no. And if it's yes, are you authorized to commit to doing that? Well, I think there's a third answer, Vice Mayor. I don't know if, there, if there's been a, a relocation amount discussed. I just know that the owner is in discussions with the tenant. That I can say for sure. Okay. As far as relocation amounts, I have no idea. Okay, that provides clarity. Because then okay. I'm going to go to staff to ask, is that something that could be part of the condition, you know, uh, as a part of this, that the, that the te current tenants have the relocation assistance? Is that something that we could condition? Yes, Vice Mayor, it's something that you could, but it, I have to also clearly state that it's outside the planning and land use process. If there were house in there, then you could condition it as part, as part of the land use process, but this is outside the land use process. Vice Mayor, uh, this is Rosalind Huey over here, Deputy City Manager. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to jump in on the discussion um, because one element is, is missing and our Office of Economic Development and Cultural Affairs, we actually have uh, a team of staff who work with small businesses that are encountering displacement. Um, Vic Farley is our lead on that. He's actually been working with uh, small business owners along Ellum Rock. Uh, and certainly we can connect Vic with these existing tenants to see what ways our city staff can help them also with relocation, finding potential other uh, locations. Yeah, so so that's great and I'm, I'm glad we do that. But I just wanted to make sure that in answer to Council Member Torres's request for relocation assistance, when I hear relocation assistance, I, I generally uh, interpret that as they're going to help either financially or do something to move them. So uh, given that the uh, architect is not able to commit to that, I just want it to be clear that what, what is being uh, promised is not relocation assistance. So, so I just, just, just to be clear, so that people get don't get their feelings hurt. 
Thank you for the clarification. That's a, that's a good point. And I see Councilmember Torres wants to jump back in. Go ahead. Yeah. So I guess I already motioned to support the project, but this is, as Councilmember Ortiz has stated time and time again, this is super important uh, for us to make sure that we are not displacing small businesses. So I already made the motion. Uh, I can make a friendly amendment to my motion, which is so weird, uh, <laughs> to, for, for this, uh, for, for something like this, so maybe do I have to do that, Mayor, or should somebody offer a friendly amendment? Because this, this is this is super important. I heard yes uh, when I asked that question, but <laughs> but now it's not a yes. So now I'm uh, one a little bit ticked off about that, but um, but that's why I made the motion because I heard yeah. yes. Do you want to? You, you can amend your motion, but do you want to state? Let's take a pass at what you want to amend it to to be. So. I motion to support item 10.3. Um, I, I motion to support item 10.3 with the with the objective of of the developer helping the two small businesses on the first floor get relocation uh, financial uh, services for relocation and support. And when you say helping them, does that mean connecting them with our city resources? City resources, a, a potential, I mean, real money assistance, a, a you know, a, a moving fee, a, you know, a grant, whatever it may be, however we do it. Well, I need, I need the motion to be specific. And, and I will, I, I very much appreciate where you're going with this. I think the reason that we have run this through the Office of Economic Development is we have not wanted to add additional barriers and costs to building housing. And so there is a trade-off here, I'll just point out. But if you want to try to be more specific, we can confirm with staff that it's legal and feasible, and then we can entertain the motion. Sure. Well, let's hear, let's hear from Nora then first. Why? Well, I don't think we had a specific enough motion there. It, it, okay. it wasn't concrete. Right. And maybe we could ask staff if staff wants to suggest yes. something in this realm. Would that be okay, council member? Yes. Okay. How can we support the tenants in a way that might be feasible and legal? So thank you, Mayor. Um, one thing that city staff can commit to is just part of our business development services that we would offer to all small businesses throughout the city is connecting these two small businesses uh, with technical uh, assistance. Um, this is not direct financial assistance. This is connecting them with existing technical uh, assistance providers who could help them uh, find locations, help them uh, with any financial or accounting services that they may that they may need. All right. I see some other hands up. Do we want to let the conversation yeah, no, continue yeah, go, and then go, we, we go, can come back to you? I, well, I promise not to call the question without circling back yeah, to no, you. No, no, uh, but I mean, I want to hear from Nora if we can actually, before anybody does a friendly amendment or makes another amendment, I would just ra I'd rather hear from Nora straight from the source if we can even do this. Thank you, Council Member. Um, I'm uh, trying to check, but right now it doesn't appear that that is um, part of the uh, conditions for the approval, and I'm not aware of a policy that would require under it with this type of a project a developer to provide that service. Yeah, I know. I guess I did get that, Council Member. Uh, all right. Um, Okay, thanks, Councilor. We'll come back to you. Councilor Foley. Okay, well, I had a question about the quasi amendment, but it's not a quasi amendment. So, and, and my comment was going to be that uh, while it's important to assist tenants who are being displaced, particularly small businesses, I'm having a hard time including that in this motion without the applicant being here to say that that makes sense to them and that they can do that. I, I, I am supportive of the motion. I'm not supportive of adding any restrictions further on the applicant without the knowing that they can, are willing to accept that as a condition. Right, no, I, I get that. So you know, you know what, I, what I'm gonna do is I, I this, is, this is a very hard decision, obviously. We, we really, Senior affordable housing is extremely important. We know that. Uh, revitalizing East Santa Clara Street is ex ex extremely important. However, Angelou's 
as Councilmember Ortiz alluded, is an immigrant-based small business that, by the way, has thrived uh, with a very, very ugly, empty building right in front of it. Uh, and small businesses around there that have closed down, just letting you know, right? We've, we had Paper Moon there and then Chromatic Coffee and a bunch of vitamin shops. And so those all went out of business and Angelou's continues to stay there. So I, I know the importance. So I'm, I, I will, I guess, work offline with, our, uh, with the local business to, to make sure that we, we get them the, the support they need uh, because I also don't want to be against senior affordable housing. But this is, this is the unfortunate uh, the unfortunate, it's just unfortunate what's happening. And so uh, with that, I'll keep my motion of supporting the project and working offline with, with uh, the developer with our small businesses. So okay. I'll just hey, Mr. Mayor, can I, can I jump yeah. in right here? Feel, feel free. Thank you, Council yeah. Member. Go ahead, Kurt. Yeah. You know, Council, I've been working in, in this wonderful city in San Jose. I love working in San Jose. I've been working here since 1975. We currently have over 2,200 units going through entitlements. This city is very important to me, not only as an architect, but I live in San Jose. Um, and I like Angelo's. I've eaten that place more times than I could, than I have it. Um, Councilman Torres, I'll make you a per personal promise from me to you right here in front of the council, not as part of the condition, but I will do everything I can to help the owner work with your uh, relocation of that tenant, because I think that's really important. And I want those guys back in the building. So I'll make you a promise. I will work on that. So if you're if you're comfortable with that, that's good because I think you're going to have difficulty to come up with a language on a on, a, on the condition that's going to make sense. Because, uh, but they need assistance working with the Rosalind's office. Maybe uh, find another spot through the use of uh, the real estate agent that's been involved in this project. But I I will make you a promise that I will assist them in getting where they need to be to get it back in. I hope that helps. Great, thank you. Great, thank you. Thank you both. Okay, uh, Councilor Ortiz. Real quick, um, I just wanna thank my colleagues for their comments in regards to making sure that uh, we, we are preserving businesses, that they don't get displaced here in the city of San Jose. I have been having, I think what we're missing right here is a policy, right? We, and we can't just pull a policy out of a hat right here on the, on the dais, I have been in conversations um, with uh, uh, OED uh, and uh, well, Vic, who is from OED, in regards to a specific policy around anti-displacement. I've been stressing the importance of it, that it needs to come sooner than later, but they're still working on it, but that's something we could connect on offline so that in future situations like this, we have a mechanism we could speak to instead of just like trying to put together a plane while we're, while we're flying it. Thank you. Yeah, well, well said. Okay, I don't see any other hands. Tony, let's vote. Torres? Yes. Cohen? Aye. Ortiz? Aye. Doan? Aye. Candelas? Aye. Bully? Aye. Matra? Aye. Kamei? Aye. Mahan? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're on to open forum. Open opportunity for Mr. Mayor, questions. Council, thanks so much. Everybody, staff, everybody, thanks for all your help. And we'll, uh, we'll get this, make this happen. And Councilman Torres, I'll reach out to your office in the next year or so because I'd like to talk about a couple other things. Thanks, Y'all have a good night. You too. Be safe. Thanks. Have a good evening. Thanks, bye. Okay, thank you. We're on to open forum opportunity for members of the public to speak on any city business that was not agendized today. Mike? Yes, thank you. Sorry, it's been a long night, so I'll make this quick. Um, I have no problem with the use of consultants and architects representing applicants, but I really do think we should command the presence of applicants for an entitlement hearing. Uh, second of all, I, having heard tonight the need for uh, the creation of a new gathering place for people to worship, I would ask the council to consider the establishment of policies to protect existing places of worship. Thank you. Ms. Ryan Mendoza. Hello, City Council, Mayor, how are you? Good evening. That was a great meeting. Thank you, I learned a lot uh, with the zoning and thank you for giving the Cambodian people a chance for the, for the place of, of peace. You know, with this kind of work we do, we need more places like that to come to peace in the morning and find ourselves 
Um, thank you. I learned a lot. Have a good one. Back to council. Thank you. Everybody have a great night. We're adjourned. <laughs>